If you're from overseas and you need to find land, you can go to patreon.com slash big deal Blake to just find home, just like Robbie did. <laughs> Hello, ladies oh, and gentlemen, welcome to episode 139 of A Brew With You. I am one of your hosts, Blake Nickel, accompanied by... <laughs> Literally accompanied. <laughs> accompanied by Jeff Stewart. My God, I, I don't even know what to do after that opening right there. That was I know, awesome. I, had to, like, I wanted to like do that intro while we got the giggles out. I was totally unexpected. Yeah. I was thrown off for that one. Yeah. Hi. How you doing, buddy? I'm I'm tired, but I'm good. I'm, yeah. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, Um. I think we just woke up a little bit there. I did. Well, yeah, that just like really helps me out, the, the little intro there. So. Well, I have to do like, there's no way to, to delay lay this right now i have to get right into these yeah. these musical melodies that we're hearing before us so the first like for only like the third time on the show i think ever joining us yeah. from the, i don't know oh see i have to be careful how i'm saying this is actually a big thing i want how before i introduce you okay yeah, i yeah. don't want to say from the man from down under because that's <laughs> not is that right can i say that down under is more associated with australia than bad. new zealand however i mean it it literally means south of the equator right. which is true of new zealand okay and argentina and south africa and other places oh, yeah i didn't know that the either. man from the down down under because <laughs> yep. you're lower yes yes so yes. the man from the down down under re- just he just released his first debut musical album pumpkins you can get it now uh, no, he's gonna plug away on all that yep but check it out joining us is Robbie Ellis. Hello. Thank you very much for having me. I'm yeah. so Welcome excited to have you. I've been hyping you up for a long time. I've been plugging your show, uh, plugging your show, plugging uh, your album a lot on the show for since uh, we've been in touch and helped yeah. you with the art. And and it's uh, awesome to have you on, especially that you're going to be going on tour for a little bit too. I am going on tour, yes. Uh, yes. I have an East Coast tour. Yeah, East Side. And I, <laughs> and I count Chicago because Chicago, of course, has an East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> it does. We we have a lake. We have water. <laughs> with, um, with, with climate changing all over the place. Hurricanes sometimes. Well, <laughs> well I'm, in, in I'm, Chicago? <laughs> I'm playing at three venues. I'm playing at, at Second City, at Comedy Sports Philly, and at in the Pit Loft in New York City. And mm. Second City is the one which is closest to the water. <laughs> oh, no. Is kidding. it really? Second City? Uh, is- actually, no. Comedy Sports Philly might be closer to the Schuylkill River. Yeah. But, but that's west. That's at Belmont. That's west. Because like, comedy sports is on Belmont, right? No, no, no. Comedy sports Philly. Oh, Philly. I'm talking yeah. Philly. Second, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, when you say that, second city Chicago. Chicago. No, comedy sports Philly is in Rittenhouse Square. Okay. Yeah. So the second city one might be closest to the. I any think kind it's of closest. Body of water. It's closest to a significant body of water. Is there yeah. anyone that's down under, below each other? Which ones on the Philly? Philadelphia is pretty close with like Chicago, right? As uh, far as like going across the map. This will be a fixing the facts for. Oh, yeah. someone yeah. watches the show. Um, yeah. <laughs> Or at least watch the show to get the Where, content. Which is further south, Philly is, or I? I would suspect Philly. I'm, I think Philly is further south. I, I'll say. I'll, mm, mm. I'll say. No, uh, mm, <laughs> I'm saying Philly's more north of Chicago. That's my guess. Well, here's here's what I know. Like the you go to the border with Canada with Wisconsin, that yeah. is south of Maine. Sorry, that is sorry, that is north of Maine. North of Maine. Yes, I think Chicago is almost in line with Toronto. Like it's very close to Toronto. Like even Milwaukee is like if you go straight across to. Yeah, the you but, know what but this Toronto kind of dips into the United States. Right. Ontario dips into the United States like that. This is prime <laughs> bar trivia question because I remember like the last question we had. Like, I haven't done bar trivia in a while, but one of the last questions is which city in California is actually on the same level as like Columbus, Ohio. Okay. You think about how far those two are, mm-hmm. but they're actually like. Yeah. Almost on the same line, and it's pretty. It's like San Francisco, it's probably. San Francisco, yeah. Sacramento, or something. Probably, yeah. yeah. I don't even remember. I, I don't <laughs> think we got that one. Maybe we did. Maybe someone else on my team. I don't remember that one. Huh. Yeah. I'll fix the facts on that one. Yeah, too. fix on the facts. Right. <laughs> Speaking of fixing the facts, let's do our little intro here. Get yeah. to know Robbie and try this very rare beer we have for us. So, for any of you joining us for the very first time, a brew with you is where Jeff and I, and sometimes Robbie, mm-hmm. will try a beer they've never had before while discussing random topics, and the whole episode being released on Monday. If you like what you hear, like what you see, you like to feel, go to patreon.com slash big Blake to just support the show. Today, I brought the beer. Jeff, can you please what distribute you got those here, up? man? I'm excited for this. So, a couple weeks ago, um, friend of the show, friend of me, friend of Jeff's, Thank you. and maybe a friend of Robbie down the road, I don't know, um, Aaron uh, uh, did me a favor, and uh, well, I did him a favor, and uh, I we exchanged services like with you and I, hmm. and he um, got me this four pack from One Well Brewery. I'm assuming it's called Zalapa. Zalapa? Uh, it's 
I think, it, I think it's jalapa, jalapa. because yeah. it is related to the word jalapeno. jalapeno. Yeah. So you see yeah. the X, and I think I pronounce it with Z. Yeah, they put an yeah. Extra jalapa. Like a Spanish is X and J is interchangeable. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. What I'm sad about this is one of my favorite beers I ever had, and they don't even make it anymore, was from Pipeworks, and they did, it was a pepper-infused beer. Not hot pepper, it was regular pepper, and you could actually like taste like the red and yellow peppers in the beer, mm. and it was very like, bizarre, like, but oh, it was that's weird. It was yeah, awesome. like a bell pepper kind of thing. Yeah. So um, Aaron... Got this to me and he says, like, you're not gonna have any heat with this. You're 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 just you're gonna have that just that jalapeno taste. And like I don't know if I've ever done that with a beer. And the biggest thing is that they don't distribute. It's from Kalamazoo, Michigan. And I'll read it out for a little bit here. So it's one pint of jalapa. Don't let the style fool you. This blonde ale keeps it cool and refreshing by using a special no spice jalapeno of zappa or jalapa provides the nose and flavor to of your favorite pepper. But without the heat, this bear was born by taking chances and lives on with a passionate and fantastic following. The Hapa, Halapa, <laughs> Cult Club. It's hard to say. Not a not a member. Join now today. Blah blah blah. All right, Bigfoot. Oh, uh, Bigfoot tested and wizard approved. I stop it. Wow, that's a first. So it sounds like right. they almost. Which wizard? Yeah, 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 exactly. Is this like a Michigan this local thing that I'm supposed to know about? Or no, that I'm not from Michigan. We have well, to ask Aaron about that. I New, know New I, Zealand does have a Wizard of Christchurch, by the way. A, what a is wizard that? of Christ. Well, is Christ, it a religion? Christchurch is a city. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, when we say Christchurch. I'm thinking religion. Yeah, yeah. No, no, fair enough. It's yeah. named after an, an Oxford thing. Okay. Um, but yeah, the Wizard of Christchurch is just like <laughs> an old dude who dresses in robes and. Goes around the city center and oh, fun. rides on the tram for free. No and way. He's kind of like the town mascot. Yeah, oh, basically. Oh, basically, yeah. Um, he's living the life right now. And it, it was it was lovely. Like I took my my girlfriend is she's Illinois born and ra- born and raised, and yeah. we traveled to New Zealand uh, for her very first time late last year. And oh. we were in Christchurch for a bit, and she got to see the Wizard of Christchurch. And <laughs> hey. hop, hopped on hopped on our tram. Oh. And, and he's his thing is he always disappears like um, a wizard. No, yeah, no, no. He always disappears on census night. On what night? Census. He never gets counted in the census. What is it? I don't. Sen- what do you mean census? Oh, like when they're when they're no. taking the population. Like, yeah, the, the, oh, the population. So he census. doesn't exist. God. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He al- he always disappears. Like well, I don't know. Wizards aren't really funny. human, right? I yeah. mean, he doesn't want to be missing, leading the facts. Is there right? a lot of people yeah. like taking pictures with him? Like, is oh, he, tons. Like, yeah, a celebrity yeah, absolutely. Down there? Yeah, to- total celebrity, and he he did like a speaker's corner type thing like on a soapbox in the main square of Christchurch. Nice. And, yeah, I love it. Cathedral I love Square. It. Oh, I don't know if you know about this one, Robbie, about Chicago's very own mascot and see if uh, you heard about this one. Man. Huh? Okay. Tamale Man. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't even think about that guy. Yeah. Well, no, I'm thinking about the, the, the Jacket man. man. Jacket Man. Who's Jacket Man? Jacket Man. When the summer cruises are going on, he's on one of the bridges like Monroe Bridge oh, in yeah. Chicago uh-huh. and he has like 50 different jackets and he wears like these full color <laughs> suits and so anytime he just like takes them up and does these spins and all the people in the boat like cheer and he just shows up every day and he's like multicolored jackets yeah. like who is this guy but the rumor has it that he did it very well for his life he's just retired and he just bought all these clothes and he just like just dances on this dance. bridge for all the mm. tourists and it's tr- it's true it's very true I guess Johnny about that and then tamale man is just a literally a tamale a, guy yeah. tamale guy tamale guy just walks around with a cart full of tamales and sells them in bars it's Sweet. genius. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. genius. I, I got a picture with he him. He comes in at like one, two in the morning in bars and just sells these tamales for like a buck or two a piece and he just sells out like that. Good for him, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's in the drink he, too. He, yeah, it, it was really funny. There was a local uh, Chicago comedian who you could tell this joke to the local audiences and stuff like that. Because like when the tamale guy shows up at a bar, you know, bars usually don't sell food. Mm-hmm. He shows up and it's like 2 a.m. and everyone's like, ah! Hey, tamale guy! He's like, what do you think tamale guy's like when he comes home to his wife and kids? It's like his kids are like, ah, it's the tamale guy! Like everywhere he makes an entrance, he's just the tamale guy. Uh, or they no, don't you, you get used to that. You get a really big head out of that. Yeah, right, well, no, yeah. It's like, where is my entrance? Or <laughs> yes. like or, has to bring along his own little retinue. Or of that's why he goes out because he doesn't get it. And yeah. flag wavers. <laughs> and well, let's let's try let's um, jalapa. This, I bet you this would be good with tamales, actually. Yeah. 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 So let's try this jalapa. High fives. Oh, I got, little, I got a little. I got a small. Yeah, me too. All me too. Right. I'm sorry. Why did it do uh, that, Aaron? Was that, maybe it was a practical joke. Uh, yeah, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Jeff, talk amongst oh, yourselves. Yeah. All right. Yes. Uh, um, so. So anyone that I, I don't know, don't know if you'd say that. Don't know if you'd chant this in the United States, but in this instance, we'd go floor suck, floor suck. Oh, so I floor gotta, just, I gotta mop it up with my mouth. Yeah, huh? yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, we do not do yeah. that around here. here we go. All right. 
We're good. Um, <laughs> I, I managed to contain mine. Yeah, because I was, I was watching yours. I was like, oh, I wonder why yours, yours is doing that. And then I looked at him. <laughs> yeah, doing the same thing. Physics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or or chemistry, cool. depending on ke- chemistry and physics. Phys- uh, yeah, well, Science. I mean, well, the chemistry happens first. The physics happens after because of gravity. Mm. So um, the cans kind of exploded on us. Anyone that's ugh, just listening, I got a little bit of taste already from that. Uh, I did too. There, there's, Emergency. There's definitely I mean, jalapeno yeah, in there. Yeah, there was, was a joke, wasn't it, Aaron? He's like, "Got him." I hope they do this on the show and it opens like that on camera. <laughs> got me. Yeah. All right, let's try this. Mm. It's kind of actually really, really good. Like, it's definitely not overpowering. Like, you could tell that they took the seeds out of the jalapeno, so it's not like it's not a bite on the tongue or anything. Yeah, I've said it a million times on the show. When you have an accurate description of a beer, that's always yeah. major points. This is yeah. exactly what it tastes like. It tastes like a jalapeno without the heat. So, yeah. yeah I they, don't, they, they've done really well. I don't know how... I'm not a food guy, so I don't know how sure. ingredients tend to work like that. But they did really well. And it makes jalapenos less objectionable. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I know. It's, I've never heard of a special no-spice jalapeno. That's what it says inside the can. Oh. A no-spice. Oh, so a it's a variety no of jalapeno, jalapeno pepper. But that's which, from, like jalapeno Michigan. Like, where do they get the jalapenos from? I wonder. Oh, like, I don't know. The same place that <laughs> the yeah. wizards get them. Mexico? In the big, in the Bigfoot. Well, I mean, yeah. Food gets imported all over. Yeah. We yeah. eat bananas and they don't grow here. Yeah. <sighs> that's... And neither... And, you know, oh, oh you know, uh, I think I said this on the show already, but the only state in the country that uh, grows its own coffee beans is Hawaii. You know Sounds that? right. Yeah. yeah. Just one fact for you. It's just tropical. Well... I'm very happy yeah, with this. this is really um, good. Very good. Well, let's, okay. Now let's I'll partake with this it. and learning a little more about New Zealand. Sure. Um, For sure. So, Robbie, um, I think you're um, our first guest in 139 episodes of the furthest away to be able to be on the show, which is exciting. Sounds plausible. We flew you in just for this. Yes, we did. <laughs> yeah. Yes, flew me in all the way from West Loop. Bu- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our budget's increasing, so we're just flying you in. West Loop, New Zealand, you mean, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> they got wizards there, too. It's like $2.50. <laughs> okay, so let's let's go back a bit here. You're born and raised in New Zealand. That's correct. Okay, and what was that like in terms of well, how I have to relate to, but does, do you have a big family? Is it, did you have, is it, uh, big neighborhood is a was it uh farm life what was it like out there i mean i don't know what it, yeah. new zealand's like at all so i grew up in a city of 1.5 million people holy shit okay and that which is that the that's auckland auckland okay auckland auckland, A-U-C-K. auckland. so so in, in a u.s accent that's auckland as opposed to oakland got it Oak, oh yeah oakland they, they are, well if you're from philly then it's oakland oakland, <laughs> oakland or oakland, auckland. <laughs> See, say, you're, this uh, is why you also Auckland, have like such a great music because you, you hear the accents so for, like just to the T. Yeah, the, Phil, Philly's a weird one that I haven't I've really mm. got my head around. I just haven't been exposed to enough of it. Well, the one, the one thing is it get tricky too is when you go to the bigger cities like New York. I mean, there's a lot of like, people. There's like the stereotypical New York accent, but mm-hmm. there's really you know you talk to someone in Brooklyn, it's very different from someone in Harlem. Right, it's that's very, true. Yeah, yes, so, yeah. But uh, so let's see if try to do again. I'll, Oh, uh, Auckland. 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 Okay. Yeah. Is that the capital? No, it's the largest city. Um, so there's a there's a bit of a you know inferiority complex as you know small places versus big places mm-hmm. from the rest of the country as there is an inferiority complex of New Zealand in relation to Australia. Yep. So Australia doesn't pay New Zealand much attention, and Auckland doesn't pay the rest of New Zealand much attention. Mm. <laughs> so I have a question before we even go more on. Is the term kiwi offensive or no this is a strange thing that i get asked in america a lot yeah um i think it's just it, the times we're in now yeah. too it's, it's just, uh, yeah it's part of the times we're in and partly the partly the location i'm in because you know it's a major urban city predominantly yeah. and i i go in predominantly liberal circles and, sure. yeah. and people are very very aware of not causing offense um <laughs> especially in the midwest too you know yeah. That, yeah, yes yeah. midwest is a factor in that as well um kiwi is not at all an offensive term Great. Uh, you you can, heard it here on the show. It's official. <laughs> yep. <laughs> is, it a, is it a friendly term or is it? Totally. Oh, really? Totally. Uh, so ki- kiwi means a few different things. Kiwi, the the first original meaning, it's onomatopoeia for a bird. The call right. the call of that bird sounds like. Isn't that your, isn't oh. the, the, na- the bird, the national bird? It's the national bird. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's just, endangered and it's nocturnal. It's got a long beak, right? Got a long really, beak. Really, really long. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it's flightless. And it appears in the logo of the New Zealand Air Force. Oh, fantastic. No kidding. Oh, I love that. And it's flightless. And it's flightless. I think that's awesome. But that's 
That's like that's yeah, awesome. That I is love hilarious. That. We'll see yeah. the bird can fly now. We're gonna make it not extinct. We're gonna yeah. make it I fly now. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, there, there are lots of different locations in New Zealand that you can go see kiwi, and they're in darkened enclosures. And I think, okay. I think there are a couple of kiwi in the San Diego Zoo as well. Oh, I believe okay. it. Oh yeah. yeah, San Diego Zoo is the biggest one in America. So yeah, I would believe so. Uh, so. Awesome. I just wanted to clarify that because I was going to introduce you and would like do some like pun. I always start off the show like an idiot. I always do like the like the hee kiwi or something like that. And some joke. And I was like, oh, should I say that? I don't know. But yeah. I should have just went with it and just be like, if I get burned, I'll get corrected. Man, no, no ki- kiwi is not at all offensive. Good you can know. call New Zealanders that with impunity. Yep. So it's it's a large city life that you grew up in. Yeah. A- Auckland, a uh, city of 1.5 million. It's, uh, it's pretty spread out. So if you think of, you know, you were talk uh, Chicago, 2.6 million, but it's a lot denser because you've got square mile after square mile mm-hmm. of three flats here in Chicago. Mm. Um, whereas Auckland has a quite dense central core with office buildings mm-hmm. and then a K outside the central business district is just one story, two story family dwellings. Mm. So that's, that's a challenge that Auckland is going through right now to intensify, to create a denser city, which... Um, you know, because lots of people want to move there, and you can't just keep expanding the city Outwards, out into yeah. farmland forever. You got, go up, you, got <laughs> you got to go, you got to go up. So it's a, it's Auckland's going through some growing pains, but mm. you know, That's, uh, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you're also in another city that's going a lot of pains right now. Right. We've <laughs> done a lot of like pray, we do a lot of like love hate on the show with Chicago. I mean, mm-hmm. especially it's a love this, hate city for sure. Is, yeah, I whether mean, it's weather, politics, sports. How do you feel about Chicago? Like honestly, um, I. It's a major world city that is not often on the radar of the rest of the world. That's so weird. And that's so true. Yeah. That's so true. true. And the, the funny thing is that I could go to Los Angeles or San Francisco or New York or to or even Boston, the Boston area, um, and I could swing a cat and hit an expat from, <laughs> you know, uh, from the UK or right. from Europe or right. from Australia or from New Zealand, and they are just not as thick on the ground here in chicago mm. um and that might be partly my experience because i'm more more primarily working in improv and comedy which is you know it's not an industry that attracts a lot of people from around the world because there's no money so you can't really get a visa for it <laughs> yeah, right um, you get a visa for comedy yeah uh, I'm, gonna I mean, I mean, for, I'm gonna be an improvisational uh, uh, a musical uh improviser in the in chicago if you're if you're an entertainer and you move to the u.s you move to new york or la because yeah, that's sure. where you can get serious well, work is, yeah. and that's the, the yeah. now, as you know i'm preaching the choir here robbie but that's like the I mean, Chicago doesn't like it, but it's the truth of that. This is such, this is the city to get grounding in, in terms of Mm -hmm. get reps, stage time, make a community. And then, but at the end, you got to go to New York. You You got to, of course you have to. But so what is the comedy scene like in New Zealand? Because that drew you to Chicago and that's absolutely right. Yeah. Um, it's well, the, the improv scene is many orders of magnitude smaller I'm sure, well, uh, yeah, you're going. I mean, I can imagine. I don't know how how small, but Chicago's you know top one of the top in the world. Like that's all it is yeah. out here. Yeah. I think. I think like in terms of raw numbers, Chicago is probably the biggest. Yeah. Improv slash sketch. Like I, I call it comedy theater. Yeah. So that that's like a nice catch all term for improv, for sketch, for comedy musicals. Yeah. Which excludes stand up comedy. Okay. That's I I think that's brilliant. Fair. Said. Yeah, I think that's absolutely brilliant said because stand up is its own monster, its mm-hmm. own beast. And yep. you know, if I'm gonna watch a performance, you know, whether it's musical improv or it's a play or a sketch, it's still gonna be telling a story. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yep. It's still storytelling. Comedy theater. Right. I like that. Yeah. So very good. So it's just, it, it it's a presence in New Zealand as but in Auckland, right? Yep, there, there's a presence. Um, so I'm from Auckland. I've also lived in Wellington and Dunedin, two other New Zealand cities. Dunedin, that's a oh, mm. Dunedin's uh, in the bottom of the South Island, near okay. the bottom. It's a university town, okay, which is it's really cool. Uh, strong I Scottish know. influence, okay. Mm. So they really celebrate that. Um, you know the the main tranche of initial settlers in that region were from Scotland, of course. And, yeah, and um, well, in England too was a big part. Was that more Australia? Was England? Oh no, no, no. no there's uh, the the other big city in. New Zealand in the South Island, Christchurch, which I Christ mentioned before. Wizards, very, very <laughs> English. Ah, yes. Mm, so, ah. so you you look at the city centre and you've got like Gloucester Street, Worcester Street, um, uh, what are, what are the others? And like lots of places from the Empire as well. So like Barbados <laughs> Street, Madras Street, sort of Colombo Street. I didn't yeah. know is that like yeah diverse. 
so with pretty much Scottish and English and oh uh, well well the f- so okay I'm white <laughs> you're white what I know massive revelation <laughs> that's why I had to be careful with the kiwi this is this here. is for the benefit of the uh, audio only podcast <laughs> yes, yes 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 um, surprise everybody after 130 episodes <laughs> white <laughs> yeah. We just lost four subscribers. No! <laughs> <laughs> well, this isn't... No. Right, yeah. Uh, but yeah, kind of different constitutions of where the white settlers came from. So New Zealand, it's like the the white settlers, by and large, like 80% plus from Britain, from the British Isles. So England, Scotland, Ireland, mm-hmm. mostly. Uh, and the United States, you know, the language is English, but you got massive numbers from Germany, massive mm-hmm. numbers from it Poland, from Italy, yeah. from, I- from Ireland, too. But, you know, all all these different countries of Europe, which are sort of more minimal presences in New Zealand. Okay. Well, sure. I mean, that's also, like you said, too, it's also a smaller country. But also, I mean, distance-wise, too, that's got to be a major factor for so many things. I mean, just in terms of cultural, because of that, I mean, think about where it is, how far it is to travel there, no matter where you are, though. I figured, like, how far would you be from, like, Asia, for example? I mean, that's not... Yeah. That's not still oh, S- Singapore is still 12 hours. That, exactly yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. it's. I mean, it's like halfway, but what I've heard, though... Halfway across the world, just going north, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, yeah. the thing I have to get clarified right now... Mm-hmm. I've had two close people in my life go to New Zealand. Right. And those two and many, many others have all said the same thing. The most beautiful place in the world is New Zealand. Is that true? I think so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank I, you, um, Lord of the Rings. I'm I sure you're probably that. tired of hearing yeah. that too. <laughs> well, Lord, Lord of the Rings was... It's actually been a massive help for New Zealand's image. I, I bet, yeah. Because prior to Lord of the Rings, you know, the, the cliche was New Zealand is on the other side of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And part of that is a cliche about Americans' level of geography. You know, you, mm. are, you are mocked around the world for that. Um... <laughs> but it's not the first thing we get marked about uh, yeah but no lord of the rings in conjunction with tourism new zealand and air new zealand um they worked really really hard and you know it was the movies themselves were a built-in marketing time <sighs> campaign it, oh. and yeah it, and the movies were good which has also helped too that, but that really helped and, and as, now yeah. now new zealand and new zealanders have profile and people know who we right. are which was not not the case in the 90s and before well i believe that i mean and that's and that's sometimes you have to just embrace that in terms of the pop culture like whether whether whatever sounds dorky or it's oversaturated whatever it is you still have to embrace that it did bring a lot of people together or it it, it especially for something in the magnitude of lord of the rings yeah I and mean, that's like arguably i mean well, I, actually it's my favorite trilogy of all i time, don't but. give a shit about the movies because sure. I'm, I'm just not a fantasy guy Sure. I'm not a fantasy... You're a realist. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think that there are so many great stories that can be told with plausible real human experiences that I I don't feel the need to seek out fantasy stories. Funny your music. That's That's a great point to bring up some of the t-shirt I'm wearing right now. Just got this. I went to the cake. Cake is the Chicago Alternative Comic Expo. They spelled comic wrong. What? Did they really? It's got to be with a K. Well... Comics. Oh, it would be like Kate's... Anyway, no, 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 that's all right. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, I don't, I'm digressing you, sorry. No, 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 no worries. Uh, previous guest we had on the show, Tony Reckenwald, he recommended the show. He's a big comic guy, and uh, this is like an indie comic book scene. I was like, oh, what the hell? I'll go to it. I haven't been to one of these in a while. And actually, for an independent show, and this is actually kind of parallel to what you're talking about, is <clears throat> it's all these local artists that are not supported by like Marvel or DC or these big publishing houses or anything. A lot of it is in-house or it's small-time publishing or they just do it themselves. And it's no superheroes. It's all people. Mm-hmm. It's just people doing it, telling their stories. Or sometimes it's told through uh, personification, through animals or, or, or trees or whatever maybe. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of themes that you see a lot. And um, a lot of these people, uh, a lot of, in my opinion, uh, these artists that I saw, you know, could see they're, a lot of them are introverts, but a lot of artists and writers are. But how they express themselves through these awesome stories of just yeah, the art and it was gorgeous and I, I bought some stuff talked to some people and it was a great time and i just wanted to plug that on the show it was a great time I like I got, i'm wearing the t-shirt now so I'm, is that an actual character or is that someone no, else's that's the, it, was just, just, okay. it was just like the, the yeah, show's yeah. theme sort of thing but well, just going I, to your point I, about I'd, the like, I'd like movies. to point out i'm wearing a brew with <laughs> oh, <yeah>. t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> because because I am I'm quite I'm quite silly no, and vain. Well, let's try, 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 try. All right. Well, so um so Blake Blake sent a briefing email. Blake sent a briefing email to say um 
Yep, come, don't wear green. And I thought, I'm going to wear the T-shirt that promotes my own album, which is the T-shirt design from the album, which, aside from the text, is hopefully, green. Hopefully it's not text- exactly the same shade of green. I know, it might still show up because it's not yeah. the shade Well, of you've green. got a whole week to chroma key that. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll totally do it too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I know you're right. <laughs> but that, no, pumpkins. Yes, yeah. we have to, we're definitely anyway, going to be talking about We will get yes, into that. No, we'll definitely talk about that. But while we were on T-shirts, we can come back to that. Yeah, yeah. I like the T-shirt on you. It looks good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's yours now. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, we have exchanged t-shirts yes, now. Exchanged yes. T-shirts. yes, we have. It's yeah. official. We have exchanged yeah. t-shirts. You gave I me have a pop- two New Zealand questions. Go. Maybe stereotypical, but do you surf? No, uh, I've, been, no I've tried <laughs> once. <laughs> tried once and I was terrible Isn't it, it. Aren't there a lot of surfers? Yeah, a lot of, okay. yeah totally. Yeah. And two, rugby. What's yes. the rugby scene? Uh, well, it is, it is the biggest sport in New Zealand. Yeah. The All Blacks are... Australia... Or no, no, sorry, that is New Zealand, yeah. <laughs> no, the All Blacks are New Zealand's national rugby team. Yep. They are um, arguably the winning, the yep. the most successful international sure. sports team in any code. Did you go to the game when they were in Chicago like I, two, three years ago? Uh, yes, yeah, so they played two games in Chicago. Yeah. The first one was two months before I moved here. So that was versus the USA Eagles. Yep. And the second one was a game. If you oh my god, it was terrible. That <laughs> no, wasn't a game. Yeah. <laughs> New Zealand won seventy four to six. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He remembers the score. Yeah. Oh yeah, I I, <laughs> I looked it up because I, I used to be a tour guide and the um is that right? I, I moved to Chicago, became a tour guide after four months. Oh, we have to talk about that <laughs> yeah. too. So but anyway, the it the route past Soldier Field, and yeah. I would say the. It's the home of the Chicago Bears, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But the most important sports match ever played there was when New Zealand beat the USA Eagles 74 to 6. Um, <laughs> and then then I saw, I went to the New Zealand Ireland match in November 2016. And that was embarrassing. But that was, that was a heck of a monumental 11 days. I mean, for Chicago in general, because in those 11 days, um, the Cubs won the World Series. <laughs> yep. Don't tell him that. He's not a Cubs fan. Sox fan. Okay. Well, it was it was a massive occurrence for the re- city. I don't even remember that week. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you blinked and was the over. Cub, the Cubs won the World Series. Right. The following day, my parents got in town to visit Chicago for the first time. Oh, wow. Yep. Um, we went to that rugby match. Wow. Which um, was also history making because in 111 years of competition, New-, New Zealand had first played Ireland in 1905. And it was 100. Are you serious? Yep. That was the first time those two countries had played in rugby, and that was the first time Ireland had won. No Holy shit. shit. Yeah. So that was, I mean, good for them because they were Break definitely that the streak, yeah, huh? Right. They were definitely the underdogs. But yeah, it was. Too- I remember I wanted to go to that game. I'm not going to get into this, but mm-hmm. I mean, the prices was, was ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I was like, for I was I was shocked how much they were. I was I was looking at like seventy five or something. I think we paid no, seventy five. Oh, oh, you must have locked out then because I maybe we, I did we it probably late. booked early. Yeah, yeah. I, bought, I was looking late. Too, I looked right? like the day before and it was like oh, five hundred dollars. Yeah. No, it was so look, much. No, no, we we booked months in advance. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I actually went as uh, New Zealand All Blacks for. Um, how would you say that? I say I went as an All Black or All Blacks as an All Black. I went as an All Black. Yeah, yeah. for Halloween one year. When <laughs> actually it was the year when they won um, the Rugby uh, World Cup. Okay. Oh yeah, it was the same year because it was like in October, I believe. Or yeah, it was around uh, that time. Yeah, the, they won in 2011 and 2015. So it's 20, 2015. Yeah, that was because that, that usually falls in October. Yes, and it was like right before Halloween. Like I'm doing that. <laughs> I yeah, want to do that. I yeah. really wish it was like a bigger scene in the United States because it's Me too. so fun it's awesome to watch. Sport. Awesome. Sport. And those guys literally yeah. make football players look like a joke. Like those guys are just massive, no pads, nothing. Just, well, they're all linebackers. Yeah. it's like they're all linebackers. And they're football legs, are it, tree it trunks. Didn't, it didn't used to be like that. So. 20 years ago, the different positions had very much different body types, right? Like nowadays, everybody is massive. Mm-hmm. Everybody sure. is fast. Sure, mm-hmm. sure, sure. Um, but 20 years ago, you know, you had the stereotype of the, the prop forward. So the props are the ones at the head of the scrum, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They're like the big units back the bro- then. The big bruisers. Yeah, yeah. But the, the wingers, like the, the wingers and the fullbacks, the one who would you know, like do the running plays and score the tries. You'd be like the last one in the lateral pretty much. Yeah, right? they're, yeah, they're yeah. like the tall, fast dudes. Right, yeah. and Skinny then Skinny and quick. Yep. yep. And then the halfbacks are like the smaller ones because they're, they're the ones feeding the scrum. They're the ones getting the ball from the scrum. doing it. Yeah. They're like the point guard right. of rugby, basically. Um, so they, they're like the smaller, more nimble, mm-hmm. more nimble dudes. I love rugby. I, I mean, like too. rugby, I actually, I mean, hear what I'm saying for a second is rugby, like soccer are not to the, they're not in the top four sports here in America. But when it's on, I love watching mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I love it. Like World Cup for World soccer's Cup. coming up. I'm going to watch it. When the World Cup rugby, I always watch it too. I'm all about I like, think they're so, having another match this year at Soldier Field. Yes. Yeah. Who? There are, 
Uh, I think it's like a triple header. Yeah. So New Zealand Maori are playing. It's not the All Blacks, so it's not oh, the okay. New Zealand. It's not the New Zealand national team, but New Zealand Maori are coming. I'm sure they're going to be I awesome, th- though. <laughs> I think the um, the, bl- the Black Iron? Ferns are coming, which is the women's rugby team. Okay. Yep. Yeah. They've won more World Cups than the men's rugby team. Oh, no man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like the UConn here of, uh, <laughs> right? of, of, of rugby. Yeah. yeah they're, really no, dominant. They're three, three matches happening, and I can't remember what the other one is. I thought now. it was Ireland or something. Are they big in rugby too? Yeah, I, okay. Ireland. Ireland's, Ireland Ireland could okay. well be coming. Yeah. I thought oh, yeah. they may be in town. But yep, absolutely could be. And that would make sense, especially in Chicago too. Yeah. That's oh, a good market you could, for it. You could sell the Irish national oh, tiddlywinks and it would sell out. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And also too, I mean, uh, I went to, um, again, I'm going to soccer again for some reason, but uh, the international... Uh, um, soccer team for Poland was mm-hmm. played in Soldier Field, mm. and that was my very first live like a professional soccer match. And it was U- the USA team versus Poland. And cool. Again, Poland in Chicago, like you get Polish or yeah. Irish in Chicago, yep. you're gonna sell tickets. Yeah, exactly. you know, you're gonna great. sell it out. Or, yeah. or Mexican for that matter. Yeah, so, yeah, like the, sure. well, the, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like the Mexican soccer team plays a ton of their home matches in the US. Mm-hmm. Uh, makes sense because. You know, the they can charge more for tickets because mm-hmm. Mexicans living in the U- U.S. are generally earning more, and they've got the numbers. So they they play in Chicago, they play in L.A., they play that in Houston. Houston. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Yeah. Let's talk about now. Uh, we we were talking a little bit of the comedy scene, but how did you get into comedy? And then fast track to how do you got to Chicago? Cool. Um, I was sixteen, and in high schools in my my part of, in Auckland. There's something called theater sports. You know about okay. theater sports? Yeah. So they, co- uh, theater sports, you competitive said? short form improv. Okay. So comedy sports took a lot of things from theater sports. Theater, as a form, it originated in Calgary. It was you know popularly brought to Australia and New Zealand in the mm-hmm. late 80s. Um, in the 90s, it really had a ton of sponsorship and heyday, and it was like national finals broadcast on TV and stuff. And I came like after that. <laughs> okay. If I was ten, if I was ten years older, I probably could have walked straight out of high school and like done, been made a near enough full time living from so it. So wait, 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 when you're saying 16 though, is that 16? Is oh. when you're done with high school? No, 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 no. I uh, was, uh, I was 16. I see. Okay. And at my high school, um, well, at many of the high schools around. There, you know, you have theater sports, and I knew it was a thing. My, my parents had taken me to see theater sports shows, um, and they always had a musician at the side on the piano. Got it. And it's like I that I can do that. Yeah. That's that is something I am suited to. How many times have I said that on the show when yeah. I've had a, uh, an improviser? Mm-hmm. A high percentage of improvisers, like how they started when they saw something, and it's not a cocky thing. It's not yeah, like that. It's, it's just, just like I can do I that. Can do that. I want to do that. Yeah. yeah. It's it's that's it's that it's like connection. A realization whatever it was, that like whatever that person's doing, I could also do that, maybe a little bit better too. Okay. Sure, but it was it was different. A, it was the right mix of attributes. You oh, know, right. it was piano playing. It was playing by ear. It was hanging out with theater people, which I was mm. doing a lot of. Nice. Um, like I hang out more with theater people than with musicians, and I have for a long time. Sure. Yeah. Um. And yeah, and it involved comedy, which was right down my alley. So I just sent an email to that company yeah. and said, hi, I'm 16. I think I can do this. Is there a <laughs> chance to do it? And they said, sure, come along to this um, like high school's competition meet. Um, so it was just four high schools performing in like, you know, one of the local halls. And it was musical, school halls. musical improv, essentially, though. Well, no, it was, it, no, it was just, no, 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 it was just regular spoken improv. Like, kid, oh, it was just improv, okay. Teams from each school, you know, they'd do a two minute game and they'd do a three minute game. And, Got it. You know, they'd yeah. get scored and, and they comedy, they comedy sports. Yeah, pretty much comedy sports. Comedy yeah. sports. Yeah, okay. comedy sports. In they, high school? Yeah, yeah, that's that's how it was. That's how it's done in. But New like, Zealand. I don't, I don't feel like I hear that very often around in Chicago land or even the United States as much. Like as comedy sports, well, I didn't have that in my high school. Yeah, I mean, theater sports is licensed a little bit differently. Okay. Um, so it's you know it, it's performed at a whole bunch of skill levels from like really super pro to mm-hmm. you know licensed for schools mm-hmm. as well. Right. Um, whereas comedy sports is a, it, they've got a different licensing structure and all of that. Gotcha. In my high school, I did a little bit of theater. Um, for about two years in high school <clears throat> and that's what we did too was we had it was like introduced as part of like drama club and theater you know because you're trying to get like all different ranges yeah. and you had a little bit of that but that's a big thing also too <clears throat> in Chicago is the the short form versus the long form debate yeah, and, you yeah. Know, they're two different they're two just they're different you know I just and what's, some people say one's better than the other we all like know short form from like 
whose line is in any way from that mm-hmm. game and versus like Chicago really takes more pride on like the long form because it's I don't know more artistic or whatever they say but sure. I, I think both are both respectable arts person so oh, even your high school offered like outside of the theater stuff it offered improv stuff too in your high school well it was part of the program it was part of the curriculum so like some okay. of the improv a lot of like improv one-up games and some drills and then but we didn't have any competitions like Robbie or okay. anything like that. Excuse yeah. Me. Well, the, the competition <clears throat> aspects really, it helps to get attention within the school and it, it takes yeah. a, it takes away from the performance and it, it does make for a more difficult night when you've got like school teams and they're kind they're trying to win because mm-hmm. you can, because being good and getting high scores, you progress to the next round or to the city final or whatever. And it's a double-edged sword because it's a way to get attention within like school administrators because okay new zealand is a sporty country and yep. it's it's similar to here right high schools give more attention to sports than to the arts generally it's right. just how it is and it's yeah that's where the money is and it's it just well, always, sucks yeah. it, it d- sucks but it's true it doesn't yeah. have to be where the money is that's another story but anyway <laughs> um but but having a competition aspect to the arts and that that happened in music as well like you have the inter-school um like all the bands and orchestras would meet for a four day festival and you know, they'd all perform their, their sets and in the town hall or whatever. Yeah. And you know, you'd get gold, silver, bronze awards and it's something that the principal could crow at. Well, actually I went to a school with a headmaster. It's something that they Ooh. something that they had Again, very British <laughs> headmaster. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> my throwing him off there. My my school was a, a he's a is a very is a short Scotsman. Oh Scotsman. Yeah. You probably like, like, uh, like stop doing the accents. <laughs> it's like, yeah. J- Jim Dale from Westlake Boys High School. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey boys! Oh, oh man, fuck. it's just coming back. You can like it's shivered down your <laughs> yeah, spine right, right now. It's sh- it's Memories. Like, like got some good news about the music. I don't know much about it, but <laughs> but <laughs> they got but they got four gold awards in the recent KBB festival, and so well done, lads. <laughs> Where'd I <to> go? <laughs> no, good good job. Yeah, he he was. I think he was like in a junior. This this particular headmaster was in the junior development league for. Rangers or Celtic in Glasgow. It sounds like a typical. And then he got a, an injury and went into teaching. And yeah. there you go. Yeah. That, that, that sounds like a typical mm-hmm. headmaster principal, whatever you call it. Just yeah. Just like I'm. Here. Good job. Who are you again? Oh, that's right, Johnny. Johnny, great job at what? What do you play again? Baseball. Great job at ba- what position do you play? You know, yeah. it's just like you don't know. Yeah. It's just, I've had that a couple of times when I bet on the news. Uh, you know, you've been on some. I'm sure you've been on the news before, haven't you? I have. Yeah. So like. You, in the whatever scene and then the, the interviewer um, will like stick the microphone and just like just give me the information exactly, I want yeah, and then yeah. they'll just be like so um, what do you do again and like just, they're trying to shit like stop chit chatting yeah, me just right stop now doing you, this just, right you now. want your story yeah. just how about you don't talk and I'll just answer all the questions before you uh, even ask them that happened to me uh, I it's was like, how long a sound bite do you want? Right, exactly. Yeah. exactly right. You want 10, I, 20? Yeah. The last time I was on the news was uh, about a year ago <laughs> right. it was, it was in the Ukrainian time. village yeah. I flipped on the TV and I saw this guy's face. I was like, what's going on? Uh, yeah, and I was there and it was, there was a shooting, surprise, surprise in Chicago. And uh, they wanted to ask someone and I was there and I was like, oh, yeah, I can ask. And then they totally did a 180. I can't remember exactly what happened, but I remember like they set me up and then they, what they asked me, what is this? It's like, <laughs> like they were seeing if dude, you were the shooter. Like, what, yeah. what, what's your name? Blake Mickle. Spell it M I K O L. Right. Were you the shooter? It's like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I, I just showed up here. And then you turn into a crazy meme on the internet. <laughs> right, right. Oh, that's how it is. I'm just labeling, labeling, hate, hate, hate. It's like, well, no, I mean, I've got to ask. I mean, yeah, yeah right. We, we did wanted, you do it? Did you do it? No. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, almost got him. Damn it. <laughs> so. Last, uh, this is pretty ne- relative to news that uh, some flights now mm. are direct now from Chicago to New Zealand. They I heard that. Starting in November, yes. That's exciting. The, so they've been That's announced. Awesome. They're not happening yet, but they are uh, starting in November. You can fly direct from O'Hare Whew. to Auckland. Wow. Which is fantastic. Look at this. You that go right crazy. home in one flight. Fantastic. Oh, no. Right home in one flight is good. Back home in one flight is even better. Oh, because what's it normally? Two well, stops? yeah, you have to change in LA or San Francisco. Okay. Um, but the even better is that you don't have to clear customs in one airport 
offload your bags, do all that customs processing crap, drop your bags again, wait around the airport for your connecting flight. So you're saving five, six hours at least. Oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, that's huge. You can, you can land in the same city that you walk out of the airport of. Oh. Like, get to land in Chicago, get the bags, customs, um, drag the bags, walk literally a mile, get on the blue line and then I'm home. So really stupid logistical question. Are these new planes that they're releasing to do this kind of stuff for like Ooh. larger fuel? Uh, I Right? Like I why d- can we never do this before? Oh, no. They could. This is a giant boomerang. No, they, they could. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I, I, so a, I thought about that too, actually. It's a, like, wrong gotta, country. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. B, they, they do already do flights that length. But it's just um, Chicago to Auckland is not going to be as high volume okay. as, say, New York to Singapore. Got it. Um, so it's just announcing a new route. Just I don't know exactly location. which which airline is they using. I think it was Delta or something, um, which, which is like a really, really shocking. I, don't, I, 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 could... I have done before Sydney to Dallas, which was 15 hours and is probably going to be about <sighs> as long as Auckland to Chicago. I can't, yeah. what, I can't even fathom. The longest plane I've run is six hours, I think. I think it was from New York... It was like, it was East Coast to West Coast. I think that's six yeah. hours. I'm pretty sure that was in, in the States. But 15 hours on a plane. So th- this, is, this is an interesting thing I find about Americans, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no. It's, and it's, it's just, it's it just how you self-discovery. We're impatient. No, it's, it's, no, no. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's not an impatience thing at all. It's, um, it's just how you're raised and how, how you grow up. So, you know, you grow up in America and you learn the 50 states and their capitals. And right. it's like, it takes this song to fly from New York to LA. And you grow up in New Zealand and it's like, you are here at the bottom of the world. Australia is three hours away. Everywhere else is like Forget fucking, th- <laughs> fucking a week. And, <laughs> and, this, just, is, just don't worry and this is how long it takes to fly from one part of the world to another. Right. And when you're three years old, it's like, okay. Yeah. And for the you are prepared for that for the first time you actually do it. Whereas when we introduce geography to someone, it's like, how long is that flight? And you're, you know, in your 20s or 30s and you learn 13 hours. It's just like your brain stops ticking and computing. It's like, I don't know how I could spend 13 hours on a plane. Whereas if you're introduced to that idea of a 13 hour flight when you are tiny, it's Mm -hmm. like by the time you get to do it, you have some concept that this is what it's going to be. Always got to start them young. Got to start them young. I hate flying to California from Chicago. I can't stand three and a half, four hours. Like. Going oh. to like Australia would be crazy. My longest I, is eight hours. And I will I was, do like, a di- stirring in my seat. I don't care how long the flight is. I will do direct at every possible opportunity. I, I, uh, I hate that. changing yeah. planes. Yep. I hate changing planes, even if it's like, like I'm a two-hour two flight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I hate that I, either. I especially hate changing planes when I have to clear customs. Yeah. In between flights, oh, you have to do that because, twice because oh, the way man. the way they book the way they book flights when you have to clear customs is they make the transfer window enormous. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like we're talking at four hours at, at minimum. Jesus. Um, although if it's like, although I've had I did once change flights in Sydney. That was that Sydney to Dallas flight. Yeah. Um, so I was going Auckland, Sydney, Dallas, Cancun, which oh was a my God. terrible leg. But anyway, I had eight hours in Sydney, and Let's it was find a happy place. <laughs> I, no, but I had eight. I had eight hours in Sydney. I could check my suitcase straight through, and it was like eight hours. Sweet. I'll just hop on a train. I'll go downtown and I'll meet a couple of friends. Yeah, yeah the I guess. Yeah. Like, oh, we're just making the best of this right now. We yeah. don't have a jet lag or anything. You good with that? Oh no, Auckland to Sydney is three hours. It's nothing. Oh, for Auckland to Sydney, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it, I, about, I, I hadn't had the big, I hadn't, the big, the one, big yeah. flight of that route gotcha. yet. Um, and I'm never entering the United States through Dallas through Texas again. That was a horrible experience. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Dallas was the customs people were awful. Oh, that stinks. Um, the the flight was late getting in. I suspect that they. Like they'd rostered on people expecting flights to come in at a certain time, and our flight was four hours late. And what American Airlines was doing was just bumping through transfer passengers, but they knew that they had to put me up in a hotel. So just everybody was getting bumped ahead of me because I was in no hurry because I couldn't get a connecting flight to Cancun. Uh, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Think the best uh, one, take your time. You know, take what, maybe, yeah, but, but you, if you carry, if you bring an instrument with you, maybe you play a little song. For yeah, it. but I'm in line <laughs> to go into customs in the in the dodgy, not unconstitutional limbo area, which is before entering US soil. Mm. So you don't want to start playing instruments and making a fuss there. Yeah. That's... You're just going to piss out. Piss yeah, out like after like 15 hour person. flight, you know, Robbie just brings out, uh, well, you, you play yeah. a lot of instruments. I was about to name a couple of instruments. Like you play that, play that, play that. You do the ukulele. 
You play, I, I, play, key... I played the ukulele on my album, yeah. You said, yes, which yeah. we're going to get to right now. Yeah. Oh, cool. Because we have to talk about the album. We've got to talk about how you... First of all, we talk a little bit about your musical background, what you know, and how this album came to be because we talked about comedy and talked about theater and we're jumping around a lot but mm -hmm. you know yeah, cool. because well, it's you're a first time guest it's a conversation. It's, I, I'm yeah. just excited yeah. um, <laughs> there's a lot to talk about there's a lot to talk about because also too I, I, there's three main things I want to talk yeah. to you about it's like I want to talk about New Zealand I want to talk about the, the, the your comedy and musical background I want to talk about your album so that's a that's a that's a, that's a big that's a big bite to chew right it there is, yeah. there are a lot, three significant things yes yes so anyway we're talking about uh, you're talking about a little bit of comedy and theater, blah blah. Sixteen, uh, theater, uh, sports. Yep. Where did the music come in? Music was always there. Um, so my nana, my my grandma, um, she she's she was a church organist. Um, ah. Always a you know, a, and piano player. She played cello when she was younger. She always had a piano in the house, and that was mm. kind of a constant in her house. Mm. Um, so that was a constant from, from birth. And See, I, I exposed early to all this stuff. It's great. Yeah. And you know, every time I went over to her house, I'd just, you know, be getting on the piano. It was like, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> and eventually Beethoven. it's like, and it's gonna... like, make a tune like this. And it's like, Oh, he's taking to it. So we got a piano in our own house. Um, and things, I got exposed things to Budweiser and cigarettes. You got exposed to way more when you were three to five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not so true. true. No. So true. <laughs> my my mum and dad, my mum and dad, I I really liked the taste of beer when I was a little kid. And they'd pour like this really shitty New Zealand beer called Rynek. And it was like three. We're going to have that on the show. <laughs> no, don't. You will, you will give it a terrible rating. It's like 3% Lago or some bullshit. Oh. It's, it's piss weak. Um, but, you know, we're talking. 1980s New Zealand, which didn't exactly have an advanced brewing culture. Uh, well, yeah. um, for, Actually, I have to look into it. Sort of new, yeah, or for that matter, you know, most of 1980s America, apart from you know select pockets of the West Coast. Um, we we'll have to talk about after the show some New Zealand beers if it's uh, if it's growing. Oh yeah, there's, yeah. There's, a, there's a there's a great scene. I don't know how many you can get here, yeah. but um, no, if you you'll have the, if you go to New Zealand, you can seek out plenty mm, of breweries. Yeah. So the, the piano was uh, there uh, yep. right from uh, from day one almost, and uh, yeah, pretty much. So that's... I started. They started me on piano lessons when I was five. Um, mm. I, oh, that's awesome! But I, five years old. But here's the thing that lent me to comedy. I went to my parents when I was eight and said, "I, I want to stop lessons. I'm bored of what I'm learning in my lessons." Mm. And what I like in retrospect, I wish my mum. I wish my mum and dad had said let's find you a different teacher. But instead they said, oh yeah, just stop. But I kept playing oh. the piano. I just played what I wanted to by ear. Oh, see, you're just one of those determined sons of bitches. Yeah. You were just like, I'm going to figure this out. And you keep on hearing the song and over yeah. again and you play that wrong, wrong, right. Okay, wrong, wrong, right, right. Wrong, 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 right, right, right. It's just yeah. like that one, you find that one note, that yeah. one key, yeah. one after the other. But that that was what I really enjoyed That's was awesome. like picking up stuff off the radio, playing it by ear hmm. and... It's it's that hence the opening. You probably just listen to it for four seconds and then you you had it. Yeah, it, it's that skill that has yeah. really lent itself to playing for comedy, for, mm. for improv and for sketch. And the dis my disadvantage is that my my technique is is not great compared to like I went so for university I went to a classical music school and I studied composition and that's what I wanted to get to before we just in terms of when you were listening to these songs by ear what was the musical influences yeah I mean just, just classical no no not really no really um, no in fact I was starting to learn classical pieces and it's like I don't like this because I'm eight and this is stupid <laughs> right, right, right. Um, in, in retrospect yeah I should have applied myself and but they were your and, kids you know, yeah I know I, you kids, know, but yeah. I, I didn't have like a crack the whip sort of parent and they said it, it turned out all right, though. <laughs> I think it turned out all right, but you know, and I've I've grown to be okay with the skill level that I have, and I have a pretty acceptable skill level on piano. But compared to compared to the people that I went to university with who were doing piano performance, like that that's a serious thing to do. And when you do piano performance, you end up churning through pro arguably more repertoire than you do if you're doing violin performance or voice performance or clarinet performance or whatever. Because not only are you learning your own solo repertoire, which of course has more notes than mm. violin music, um, but you're also playing for a ton of other people sure. generally because sure. um, a good proportion of the, well, almost every performance piano student is going to be accompanying 
their friends. Sure. Um, and sometimes getting paid for it or whatever. Do you believe that the uh, piano is kind of like the foundation instrument? It's like if it's kind of like the great, one of the best musical tools to, if you like want to learn guitar, it's good to learn piano to learn some basics that way. Or is it? It's, it's a foundation instrument. It's one of the most important. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think everybody should know some piano and everybody should know some guitar. Get on it, Jeff. I don't know anything about piano. Come on. Yeah. I did try the guitar for a few years. But, All good. And boys I did the ukulele clutch. for a few years, yeah. too. Um, <laughs> yeah. You, ukulele is... Um, Never I'll, eat soggy I'll, waffles. Okay, no, okay, you guys wanna, I, I don't know how you are on the beer. Are you, you out? You still got some? Uh, I still have a little bit. Okay, just... Well, we, yeah. Feel free we, to crack we, this we, open we, and crack these we, open, yeah, too. I'm happy, to, I'm happy to split that with you. Yeah, well, I'll um, split them. When it's, uh, just no, crack them when you're I'm, ready. I'm going through this slowly. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a chugging. No, 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 no absolutely no. not. No, no, it's, it's, no it's, it's, with the jalapeno, it's a bit... Um, but yeah, uh, <clears> gu- guitar, like if you're in music, no matter what sort of music, everybody should know some mm-hmm. guitar, everybody should know some piano. Mm-hmm. Um, That's the one I couldn't do. Is I, I mean, I played piano for seven years, never good at it. And like, no, it just wasn't... I said this a million times on the show. I always felt that piano was like music is another language. It mm-hmm. is learning language is always been my weak spot. I've always been good at math or English, um, uh, science, whatever maybe. But for some reason, like Spanish and music, like language, just didn't ever sit with yeah, me. And so I, did- I I was a total languages nerd in high school. There you go. So um, <laughs> there I was you go. I was probably I went to an all boys high school. In fact, oh. I went to an all boys state high school. Which is that is, common in New Zealand? That, that is a thing. Yeah, in New Zealand. I, I, I yeah. thought that. that yeah, yeah, Australia too. I've seen that. Yeah. Um, yeah but anyway, so all boys high school was it's like, yeah, all right, lads, take your serious subjects. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going back to Jim Dale oh, now. The headmaster's back. The, the, head, the headmaster is back. Yeah, going back to your serious subjects. Oh no! You got it. You got to take your physics, your chemistry, and your calculus. And Not I, the calculus. I, I took none of that. I was. Um, so there are five years of high school. My third year of high school. By that time, I was taking no sciences, and I was probably the only, probably in out of my year of three hundred or so. The only one not taking any sciences yeah, wow in my third year of high school uh, but i was taking so it wasn't mandatory at all uh you could replace no. it with an art or something uh no the, the way it was structured yeah i, I yeah it, it wasn't technically mandatory because yeah. um i was also in in a, uh, an accelerated class where you end up taking uh certain subjects a year ahead mm-hmm. of the curriculum for your age range mm. so we so yeah we did um fifth form science and fourth form and by the time i got to fifth form my age i didn't do any sciences and i was just like doing sweet german and french and music and history and i like this and i'm gonna take take this <laughs> so after- I, we, 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 I, I have to do this right now because i was trying to find a segue into this um so I was trying to see like the instruments you play right now because we okay. got really lost in the moment about New Zealand going away. We, we haven't fixed the facts. Oh, shit. And airing the airs. <laughs> oh! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> fix the facts. Fix the facts. Fix the facts. Fix the facts. Yeah! So a little bit of, little bit of background to this. A little bit of background. Um, no. Blake Blake designed my album cover and oh I didn't bring a copy of the CD with me. I, I should, got it here. I'll put it I, up. I'll put I should, it up. You'll, you'll put, put up the graphics. Okay. Yeah, I'll put I, should, up. I need to show the pack shot. Yeah. All right. There it so, is. I'll put it up right here. Yeah. So take a note on that, Jeff. Okay. Take a note of that. There we go. Fifty-five twenty-one. Um, <laughs> yeah, there we go. So my album Pumpkins. Um, Blake did this wonderful design yeah. that I'm indicating to with my eyes. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, but um, <laughs> I, 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 wanted, I wanted to economize, so I wanted to trade favors. Um, with Blake and so Blake would do my design in exchange for me doing some uh, stings and some theme music for this podcast I love that Um, (laughs) however Blake has not actually emailed me a list of things that he actually wants Oh, so Blake. I brought my little melodica. <laughs> How many times I brought this on the show, Jeff? I said this a million times on the okay, show. No, don't put it on me. Blaming you. Oh, no. I, 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 I owe you these and I will happily make them. Yeah, I'll do it. I, and, you know, that's the funny thing. I've brought it up a million times. And I've said that verbatim <laughs> on the show a million times. Like I just, after I plug your album, I was like, oh yeah. And, he, and the same guy's going to do some stings and some music well, for the I, show. I mean, about a month ago, I raised it with you. It's like, oh, when I come on the show, it'd be a good time to introduce the things. It was I like, know. Oh, no. then, and I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate excuses. Jeff, but Jeff, Jeff and I, 
completely coincidental had horrible months in May. Just, just bad months. That's Start right. new, getting yeah, back into that's it. That's all good. Yep. That's all good. At least good. you see the person, the man behind uh, the album and the man yep. who's actually going to provide the music for us. And so when you hear it, you be you can actually put a face to the to the music now, which is great. For but, sure. So we have the fix of the facts down there. So Jeff. Now we got a new song for it. I love uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> Carbonation. We, you asked, does it make you more thirsty? Yes. I thought carbonation makes you more thirsty. <laughs> Do you think carbonation makes you more thirsty? Oh, um, I suppose it can make the the liquid feel drier because you have like dry lemonades and that yep. sort of thing. Um, and the reason we were talking about this because our beer last week was extremely carbonated. Like we popped it open. It was like every single sip, it was like we were burping and stuff like that. So we're like, does it make you more thirsty to drink faster? I don't think carbonation inherently itself makes you more thirsty, but some carbonated beverages do. Got it. It does not make you more thirsty. Okay. okay. It says while drinking sparkling water or anything carbonated, it will not dehydrate you. The carbonation in the water often makes you feel fuller because your body has to process the yeah, carbon this acids. This is like bloating mm. and so most people, in your stomach. Most people tend to drink sparkling water to slow down like um, like the flat or still water and they consume less of it. It's interesting because I like to have carbonated water or like uh, sparkling water like during big meals because I feel like it helps Burp break it up, up the food yeah. if it's huh. a big meal. That's just, I don't know. I'm just in my head about it. But mm. Okay. It's a good one. I have nothing more to add to carbonation. Next! Going back to the skin thing, because we kept talking about the skin and the seven layers seven of Seven layers of skin. And there's actually not seven layers of skin. <laughs> How there's, many are there? There's only three. <laughs> three main ones. Three main ones. Three main layers of skin. The epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis. Right. And there's like, that's, those can be like broken down to sub layers. But, but even, that, yeah. even after that, it's like, it, it, it's really not technically seven mm. layers of skin. So mm. we just had to clear up the skin. You thing. have a great market for New, Australia and New Zealand have a great market for skincare down there. You oh. guys are... Oh, do we? Do we yeah. know our shit about that? Well, because <laughs> like you guys, uh, you can fix the facts on this too, is that, oh, well, not a lot. You know, I'm not saying you know a lot. It's just it's a great market for like sunscreens and because you your population has um a very high rate of skin disease or cancers yeah. and stuff like that yeah. it just well it makes sense where you are located in the world but it's a thing i've been studying a little bit more is mm -hmm. just that's a, that it's is a big true. market for skincare that's why the joke came yep. up around that way that's true yep. yeah. i think you said there was like 70 percent or something of might skin. have said that you know, that could have been wrong but yeah. it, it could percentage. also be a high percentage yeah yeah um, I uh, we talked about the Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse. We we're doing the Disney beer thing. Yes, yes, yes. And I asked um, how much <laughs> later, how yeah. much later did Minnie Mouse come after Mickey? Yes, I'm just curious about that. Um, zero days later, they were released on the exact same day, November 18th, 1928, for Steamboat Willie. They the, the, oh, they were both in. They were both in Steamboat. Wait, Willie. Uh, wait, Mickey? What, no, Mickey's debut was Steamboat Willie. Yeah, yeah that, like debuted. that was the very first Disney animated film. <laughs> okay, now you. Oh, that was my phone isn't doing noises. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is where you can fix the refix the facts. Fixing again. the facts and fixing the facts. Yes, you are. Um, <laughs> this is something that would be up your alley, though. Okay, then. What I thought is Mickey Mouse was created before Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie was the first cartoon with sound. Instead of like, mm. uh, let me rephrase it, like sound effects. Like he would pull like the the the, the, the horn, the, the horn, uh, the, 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 the the steam you would hear and making sound effects. And what year was Steamboat Willie? 1928. Yeah, that was right. 28, 29 was right the dawn of synchronized audio with film. And mm. I think that was the very first... Like cartoon, I don't even know cartoon. It might have been the first moving picture, if that will. It was, yeah. even though it was a short, but I'm pretty sure Mickey Mouse was introduced before that, and that was the first one to, to synchronize. That probably sound. makes sense. Sort of like I the mean, piano playing, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, and like like the Felix the Cat yeah. um, uh, cartoons that would just play the, like the dramatic, piano, like the silent yeah. films, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I have accompanied one silent film. Oh, have you? Yes. Uh, I'm not trying to remember the exact name of the film, but it was Buster Keaton and it had the train and he was like, did a whole bunch of stunts with this train that he had to redirect and derail. Does anybody remember the name of it? Buster no. Keaton. Is, yeah, Buster Keaton, like doing all his own stunts. I, I should I should remember it, but because I played it. Um, Buster Keaton's been in a ton of movies. But too, anyway, lo long story short, it was... So I I was down in, I was living in Auckland down in Wellington for the New Zealand Improv Festival. Okay, and this silent film was in Hamilton, which is a city between Auckland and Wellington. Okay, uh, six hours drive from Wellington. Um, the day after the end of the festival at like four o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, so it's like you know last night of a festival, it's all big party time, mm -hmm. and it's like I didn't really want to do the gig, so I quoted an absolute <laughs> outrageous figure. And they said, yeah, we'll pay that. Oh, no shit. 
<laughs> Robbie, I that has happened to me like maybe that. one or two times. I'm talking about like from my services, graph design. And yeah, I've done that one. Like no, I've done that twice. <laughs> Just throw it, out some it's crazy so number. It's like, I don't want to do this. So I throw out a big number. I, I could totally yeah, relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> but so I I had the closing night of the festival. I woke up at 7 a.m. in the hostel in Wellington. Um, shit, did I have to... No. Oh, yeah. So I'd packed up my car the <laughs> night before and parked it in a friend's garage in Wellington so I could just like get on the road straight away. Oh, um, so drove funny. straight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> drove it. straight to Hamilton, which was like six and a half hour drive Jeez. and then played the silent film the official duration was one hour 20 but somehow they were playing it slower uh, and so it ended up one hour 45 was uh, it still worth it with the price yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um but i mean it's i'd never actually done an hour 45 of continuous playing but i'd, I'd found a synopsis and it was like a 10 page synopsis of the film on the web and i thought it's like thank christ for that i can follow the film oh wow. exactly Great. through the synopsis i was wow. so grateful for that um yeah that's and I, I just improvised my way through it it was wonderful that's so good i i'm sure you have a ton of stories too from from down down under which we're saying now which and leads into my last one. Oh yes yes because we're talking about the down under uh the rescuers release dates of oh, which yeah. one was the first one the rescuers and then the, the rescuers down under rescuers first i know that rescuers Rescu first but i don't uh, know the dates. first one was 1977 77 and the rescuers down under was the sequel which is rescuers down under 1990 that's a gap that's, that's a, a long, gap. That's a long gap time first. yeah it's a gap. well the animation is years. like i remember when i saw because i saw i grew up with uh, the rescuers and when i saw the rescuers down under the animation like that was during that time we're getting to that Beauty and the Beast and like yeah. Little Mermaid. It's like, because you know, the big four for Disney was Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Beast. Um, Aladdin, and uh, Lion King. And Lion King. Those are the big yeah. four. Those yeah. are the big four. For, yeah. Like those were like, those were big money makers. Like just, not just, but productions, you know? Yeah. Um, but they still had these like little Disney movies that came in between those movies. And Rescuers Down Under. It was one of my favorites was the Down Under. Yeah, but it hadn't it wasn't a mu didn't have no. any it was a musical. There was no like princess or any element to that right. in it. So it was kinda like just shuffled in there. But it was it was good. Mm -hmm. It was really and also during that time of like animation boom and like Beauty and the Beast was doing that the computer, like the CGI mixed with the animations. Rescuers Down Under were doing that same thing. I didn't know it was the Anywho. sequel. I thought it was just like a remake yeah. kind of thing, but I didn't realize it was a John sequel. Candy. Yeah, he was the... He was the albatross. Yeah. Re remake with different accents. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going down under now. <laughs> down under oh, now. Actually, speaking of remakes with different accents, have you seen that I there is a show coming up in Chicago, a live theater show, called Boston Translation, which no. is the Bill Murray, Scarlett Johansson film Lost in Translation, but okay. all the Japanese bits are in Boston accents. <laughs> oh, man. I Which is that. the See, greatest. That's, that's such like a small show. Great. Like you yeah. can do these little like twists on shows. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Which I, I, I need to look up the details. You, you can, I don't know, mark it. Yeah. I don't know whose show it is. I just saw it, it on Facebook. That's, and I was like, that's great. Yeah. Like that's so great about like when you can do small theater, but also get away with stuff. Like, so you don't have to worry about rights exactly. and like worry about all that stuff. Cause it's very rare that's ever happened. So, like, you get cease and desist letters from shows and stuff like that. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's oh, all I so, got. Let's, okay. So, you play musical instruments, blah, blah, Robbie. Um, you got in, started with piano, got in the foundation, and you just you, you dibble dabbled in a few other instruments, I'm assuming, yeah, too, right? Uh, like you said, my, main, my main other two instruments uh, in my life have been bass guitar and double bass. Oh, get out of here. Yeah. No shit. <sighs> So slap in the bass. You want to say Slap in the bass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slap in the bass. Slap, 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 slap in the bass with the fish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ba bass guitar I played a lot of in high school. Oh. Like there was there was a year, like my sixth form when I turned 16, I ended up switching from piano slash percussion to just bass in everything. I love that. So the jet, the big band. Did I you do upright bass too? Uh, I did both, yeah. Oh, so bass guitar that's, and that's double bass. That's my favorite. Yeah, so the big band, I switched from playing piano to playing bass. Orchestra, I switched from playing, like being percussion section leader to being the only double bassist. That's oh, wow. Great. Yeah. So you love bass. <laughs> do you have yeah. any... Uh, uh, that's real cool. I, I'd just like to hear uh, any... Uh, you got any uh, inspiration for uh, bassists in history or any bands? Scribe. Like <laughs> scribe, scribe's a, a rapper before the yeah. show. Yes, scribe the rapper. Scribe, scribe is a rapper from Christchurch who had um, <laughs> few, a couple of major hits in 2004, <laughs> such as uh, "Not Many" and um, I, what's, what's the official title of that? 
It's like, we cannot stop now. New Zealand can hip hop, stand the fuck up. Yeah, we can find some scrap. Yeah. Oh, 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 no, I don't want to get copyright. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Damn man. it. It's like, but we can play some songs from well, the, Robbie's new album, yeah, Pumpkins. Pumpkins. We do have to do that. Pumpkins. Uh, so, mark, <laughs> mark the timer. There, yeah, mark the timer, Jeff. <laughs> Pumpkins. You can, where can you get this fantastic new Ooh. album from Robbie Ellis? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> ah! where, where, where can people I'm purchase this album first off? Uh, you can put, find it on Bandcamp. My my website is RobbieEllis.net. The Bandcamp site is RobbieEllis.Bandcamp.com. Hmm. It's now, available as a CD, as a download, and as a chroma keyed what? T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Things are floating again. Well, Blake, Blake did this design, which uh, you can... <laughs> You can see which, uh, which had a pumpkin head and a t-shirt that reads pumpkins. And if yeah. there you is, could read right there. And if there is a t-shirt in your album cover, you've got to, be, you've got to manufacture the it t-shirt. Talk about the biggest thing. We're going to go into some. We're going to play some songs uh, from Robbie's album. But I wanted to get into um, it's extreme. I mean, first off, it's a comedy album. Mm-hmm. So obviously it's fun. We have a lot. There's a lot of fun. And the biggest part I feel why there's fun in this album is because... It's very diverse. Very songs are very diverse. If you have some orchestraic numbers, you have some some heavy metal guitar songs. You have some very, again, my vernacular for musical description. You have very like dainty, like piano, like, like pi- happy piano, stuff. piano only, more cabaret style. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so is that was that always the intention, or did it kind of evolve to that? Here, pour one. Okay. Yeah. So these these songs these songs were written over a five year period, and that. You know, they're sort of the greatest hits of my comedy songs, basically, from when I started writing comedy songs. Fantastic. Yeah. So they're, they're a number from 2012, um, right up until 2017, maybe, you know, f- five or six months before I went into production for the album. Uh, yes. So it was, you, just to interrupt there for a second, though, but like when you... Are you one of those writers when you wrote something from like 2012 or from that long ago? Was there like thoughts of looking back at that song and being like, "Oh man, what the hell was I thinking when I wrote this?" Or this was <laughs> this is old, and I, or is it just like, "No, oh, there's yeah. something," or there's something there? I, yeah, no, but I I wrote plenty of songs back then which I don't perform anymore. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I still perform the good ones. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, I I try to perform newer ones more and more, but if I'm doing a longer set, you know, mm-hmm. 20, 20 you minutes, bring or, back the old ones. Well, yeah, you you perform the ones that you know work and you know. F- f- Fill a certain place in a running order, and sure. Yeah. Um, so I want to play a couple songs. Yeah, and then I'll just, I'm, I'm going to play not the whole song, but just some snippets. I'm yeah. excited because uh, Blake, when Blake was designing the album, he he asked, I'd, "I'd like to listen to it." So I sent him a preliminary mix, and then when I got a final mix, he I said, "Yeah, you can listen to that." And if my understanding is, you listen to it, you know, on on loop quite a bit. I did to to get your inspiration for the design absolutely i did yeah i absolutely did and i think that based off the design too and the style you wanted to i think was fun um and i think that it's just it's one of those i feel that the theme was i hear when i say when i say simple i don't mean that in a negative way i find that great like it's 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 easy to comprehend it's fun Mm -hmm. and it's Mm -hmm. simple and i felt that that was a very how I translated that to the art is just a very simple, but you get the joke, you get the point right away. And wonderful. And I think that uh, I want to play some songs. So the first song I want to, this is like, already it just hits you right off the bat with the orchestra. I just like with the orchestra number. I know you said you didn't have a whole orchestra play, but yeah, but still like you hear all these instruments. It's also based off uh, what's the old German composer that uh, the first song is off of Uh, Mozart. Is it Mozart the first one? Mo- Mozart or Haydn, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's, okay, go ahead. Yeah, symphony number one. Um, so the instrumentation on this, I, I wanted a full chamber orchestra, and one of these days it will get performed with a full, you know, classical period size orchestra, but I couldn't afford that, but I, I faked it. <laughs> I... It's it's fantastic. So to yeah. the untrained ear... Yeah, for sure. Like, I wouldn't... If you didn't tell me, and I just... Because I listened to it on Saturday, I was like... You wouldn't even know if it was full orchestra no, or just yeah. like and, classical music geeks would would figure that's not quite sure. right, but you know it's it's pretty bloody close. Yeah. yeah, it goes with anything, any profession. Like if you look at me, if you like a design or a movie or something like that, I'm a vi- I'm very visually in tune. I can point some things, but if you you're very you know auto tuned, like I mean you can pick up. I'm sure you could find out exactly what instrument you're playing and which note and which like just like that. And I'm just. I'm in for the ride, you know, and that's why I usually don't judge music too much because it's just like I can't do that. Yeah, I like it. So I want to play this. The first song on the and it just kind of hits, comes right off the gates, and I think it's really yeah. fun. So let's play that. Oh, let's start it over. There we go. Hello and welcome to my symphony. 
and I extend you all my sympathy because the form and structure of this music are so intricately complicated, sophisticated, predicated on a thorough general background knowledge of predominantly 18th century German courtly musical tradition. It's a mission to be fishing for a way to let you know but likely that you're gravely misapplying your own instincts vis-a-vis where to applaud and show appreciation you don't want to come in prayer maturely. Like right there, like that, like just that is like not, oh man, that's just, that, that is not easy right there. It's just that, that flow of lyrics and that, yeah. that speed and that tempo, that, that is not easy. And it just, that's, I think that's an awesome song to come right off the gate, the, the, the gates in terms of you have this orchestrating number, but also to, you're, you're committed to it and also you're just cranking out lyrics, which mm-hmm. is, I think that's, that's a great way to it's, start. It's too. almost like, it's like rap. You're almost, ra- I mean, you're almost, <laughs> like, <laughs> bah, bah, but you know bah, what I mean? Like beep, beep, it's like beep. so much lyrics yeah. and it's, you're, you're, you're rhyming and you're doing all these different things at once. So mm. it's, it's like a, it's like a form of rap, I guess. You yeah. Know I mean? It's, it's wordy. It's, it's what you call a patter song. Okay. So you think of your Gilbert and Sullivan, uh, musicals. The that that company in the 1870s 1880s they had one particular performer who was a patter baritone and songs like uh, the Major General's song from Pirates of Penzance from the um, the Admiral's song from HMS Pinafore like when I was a lad I've uh, Turner mm-hmm. Turner's office yeah so there were wordy songs given to one particular performer okay um, and it's definitely a genre with a long and distinguished history Noel Coward Tom Lehrer uh, and when you get yeah. to the middle of the song. That's like my favorite part is when it just kind of drags on. You're like, right. why do they make these yeah. songs so long? So in, check in, Facebook. In, it was in, like, in, so in performance, what I'll be doing is like, um, <laughs> this is the boring part of the piece and why do yeah. composers write so long and what is the time to do? do, do? Oh, how is it only two minutes? And what's on Facebook? <laughs> really do, 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 do. Loading, loading, there it is. And <laughs> look really at fun. all my fun. notifications. Something about American English. But, oh, 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 read what is on my Facebook live at the gig. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. I, know you're, I, know, I didn't realize you were doing that when I saw your uh, the, the debut album show. Oh, no, um, no, no. Every the, time I perform it live, I get out my phone for real. I open Facebook oh, awesome. for real. I love that. Um, I love that. I, I had an album fundraiser show at MCL Chicago. Rest in peace, MCL Chicago. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I wanted that. You know what? I, I missed it. I missed that opportunity. When we cracked from the beer and we did Cheers, I wanted to do this. This is for uh, Mint. This was for... Um, the, well, the, Mint, the, Mint the is still got... Oh, ACL, I'm sorry. M- MCL, MCL. Yeah, M- MCL <laughs> ACL. is closed. Mint is still going at the Annoyance. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Mint, but, is, Mint has continued. But it was more for the closing of the theater. And that yeah. was like the musical improv. Uh, it, I mean, it was that was their main focus was musical improv in the city. And that yeah, was I mean, for, yeah, I, I was... An ongoing show? No, no, no. no, no it was, was like a theater. theater. Oh, MCL, MCL was a theater. theater. It was okay. on uh, Sheffield right by the... What's the uh, the, the concert uh, right there? The Sheffield Vic. and, and uh, Bel- uh, Belmont. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Vic. Yeah, yeah, so we're yeah. Gonna, was, near enough opposite the Vic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I just wanted. Oh to, yeah, you performed there once. I saw several times. Okay. I did a musical there with called The Mighty Ted. It was fantastic. Yeah, okay. I, Stephanie yeah. uh, McCullough was the musical director. Yes, I do remember that. Show. Se- Stephanie McCullough was really, really was wonderful when, when I was when I just moved to Chicago. Oh, she's great. Um, she's she, so good. you know, she set me up with connections. She set me up with uh, Hitch Cocktails. Yes, that annoyance show. Annoyance. I, I played for them for a year solid before my first second city ship. Uh, yeah, and she helped me get into teaching at the Second City Training Center as well. Uh, wonderful, yeah, awesome. that, that place is wonderful. Like one. closed down, done. Yep, yeah, it's done. Wow, it's yep. done. I yes. feel like it was a really good space and location. Yeah, um, it, was a, it was a lot of theaters. It was a couple of different joints before MCL and, and Studio B. Yes, prior to that. Yes, where Mint was at Studio B. So Mint was kind of the cornerstone on which MCL was founded as a theater with. A theater specifically for music and comedy. Got it. Yeah. Wow. All right. Let's move on to another song. I yeah. want to play this couple songs. Um, I don't have to play that one yet. Let's do this one. Okay. Because I have a little gripe about this one. <laughs> when you're driving in your car and I'm riding on my bike, I've got a little message for you. Why are you in the bike lane? <laughs> it's not a freaking taxi stand. Roll the beer again. I'm going to make a camera shake it's right now. Uh, <laughs> why are you in the it's bike lane? It's not 
<laughs> so here's my passage. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to throw my two oh, cents so on this. Funny. My gripe about this because. <clears throat> <laughs> on the other side of the store, because I bitch about the bikers a lot in All Chicago, right. so that's mm-hmm. why I'm like, I hear this song on the other end, where the bikers feel they have the best of both worlds. They feel like they have the yeah. rights of a pedestrian and a car, so they can just go wherever they want. And I'm hearing this, I'm like, oh, okay, the car, the bitching at the cars right now. So I just was like, okay, this is how it is. But have you Bike ever ridden your bikers. bike through Chicago in the streets? I did for a year, but it wasn't that Cause bad. Because the cars are literally in the bike lane. Like, yeah. they're all over the place. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I trained for the triathlon. Like, I had to go through Chicago, right? It, it was is. Like, yeah. Brutal. So Brutal. I am often dr- I'm often biking along Wells Street because okay. I I t- okay. I'm at Second City all the time. Sure. Uh, and that bit of Wells Street between North Avenue and Division is you know full of bars and full of taxis and Ubers and Lyfts yeah. hogging the goddamn bike lane. Old Town is and a bitch. it's a bitch uh, out for their cars and whatnot though. It yeah. is. Yeah. Um. I I don't think there should be as many spaces for cars on Wells Street as there are. <laughs> that's that's my personal opinion. Um, but at the same time, what what irks me even more is, okay, if there's literally nowhere for you to do your pickup, then fine. What pisses me right the fuck off is when there is empty space that a car can park in, oh, yeah. but the taxi or the rideshare vehicle sits all, like not against the curb, but sort of like parked in the middle yeah. with their flashes on, just so 100%. they yeah. just so, so they can be more noticeable to their pickup. So now they're annoying. That noise. Yes, I'm trying. You are in my way, and this is a bike lane, and there's space next to you. Go into the space for the car. It's such 100%. a big move because the bike. The cyclists now have to go around you, and then the cars in that lane have to go now go in the other lane. So well, no, everyone's we, fucked. We, well, no, we don't. No, when the cars aren't going opposite, we just have to merge with the cars. Merge with the cars, which, yeah. Uh, yeah. And the whole the, point of bike lanes is to keep us separated from these from the hunks cars. of moving metal that can hurt us and kill us. Yeah. I digress for a second. There's a famous YouTuber. He's like one of the, he's like one of the faces of YouTube. His name is Casey Nostat. He does the, some of the best vlogs. Um, he's phenomenal. His very one of his very first videos. He got a ticket in New York for riding uh, in the bike lane. Oh, he and, a, and he said like he did a bunch of riding the bike lane and hit like the yep. vehicles. And the climax is <laughs> in hitting the cop car yep. that's parked. He in runs the bike. to a cop car. It's yep. like I'm, I was supposed oh to be in the bike God, lane. That is so good. It's really good. Um, that yeah. was like, it's like so funny because it was like a viral video. And he does like this like super high quality work. Like it's re- he's editing. He's like one of the best editors I've seen on YouTube. That's really good. Guess, that's that's um, creative. But I asked you about the biking because the, 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 that's what you have to do with the artist. See, where did that sound from? Where did the truth come out? And then boom, yeah, Robbie's going, fuck that noise. Yeah. Park in the spot or <laughs> get out of the lane. Just just, just leave. And see, you that's just what I'm defended that well, song well on spot. Very well. Where well, well Street. That's we'll, where it came from. We'll play two more. I know the one we're going to end on. Okay. But, I know which uh, one you're going to end on. Yes, too. you do. <laughs> I, I don't know which one you're going to end on. Yes. <laughs> but um, let's think. Um, okay. I'll just talk about this one. I want to... Yeah, I'll just say this too. There's one thing I like about your song. We're talking about re-listening to the songs. Mm-hmm. There was a thing where I was like, the song I Am a Cat. Man, I'll just play a little bit. Oh, yeah, I'll just yeah. play a little bit. Yeah. I'm like, why did you make the cat French? And then after the second or third time, I'm like, oh, there's the lyric. I, I was wondering am why a you didn't. cat. I am a cat and I roam the apartment all day. Okay. I roam the apartment all day. So you get the gist of the song, and it, yeah. it gets it gets real, a lot funnier. Um, it, I've noticed that too about the song. So the two things I noticed there was like things like why did you make the cat, and then I, I catch the lyric later on like why you make the yeah. cat French. But also, I feel like there's a lot of European influence. There's a lot of a lot of French on this album. Huh. <laughs> um, well, yeah, that, that, that's Psychedelic for sure. Song about Poland too. And, yeah, well, that, that's true. Yeah, there's there's European influence. I mean. Uh, Part of that is classical music, sure, because that is where classical music, by and large, is from. <laughs> yes, um, I'm a I'm an unabashed francophile. I I'm, I like French, I like the French language. Um, at this point, I will promote that Frog Prov is doing a season. Hey, Frog plug Prov. it up, plug in, it up in Judy's Beat Lounge. We do bilingual English French improv here in Chicago. Wow, I love that shit. with a mixture we need of more of that mixture need- of French native speakers and a mixture of English native speakers. We need wow. more of that when we have the um, the improv festival here in Chicago. It's usually in April. Um, now it's every other year, but it used to be every year. And we have, uh, 
international teams come. Yep. And yep. they're doing it in their native language. I, I, was at, I was at a CIF one year and I ended up playing for a bunch of those teams. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. When, oh, when awesome. I visited Chicago prior to moving here, oh, awesome. the wow. 2013 festival, I played with companies from Finland, from Sweden, from Switzerland, from Germany, uh, from the Netherlands. I probably saw you then because I probably saw you before I didn't even know you then. That's pretty the funny. Playground 2013 with all the international teams. That's too funny. I probably might, I might have seen it. I can't remember well, on the top of my head. Actually, one of my greatest moments of improv triumph was that night, if I'm going to digress. So I, I was just, I was accompanying like six teams in a row doing 20 minutes each for the international showcase. It was the Tuesday night at the playground or something like yeah. that. And, you know, I've just been the musician at the side. It's like, hey, it's our musician. He's from New Zealand. It's like, all right, cool. I'm just the musician at the side. <laughs> and the German team, 15 minutes into their 20 minute set, they were improvising in English and they got tied up in knots about where their plot was because, you know, second language and stuff. And they just broke into German and it's like, <laughs> and the German was like super rapid fire. Is this the scene we're in? No, is this the scene? What's happening? Blah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. There. And the like bit, 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 bit. They turned to me. It's like, is this the scene we're in? And I just answered in complete fluent German. It's like, yeah, that's fine. And they're like, you speak German? <laughs> I just blew their minds. I blew the audience's mind That's too. That's awesome. I, that, that was a How moment. How many languages of, you speak? Um, decent enough for a conversation for including English. Holy Jesus shit. Christ! Is God, that you, something you were exp- that was exposed to you at three years you're old? Making too? us Americans look like idiots. Jeez, like everything no. exposed to you. Like <laughs> know, your parents are like the most educated parents ever. Like I'm, I'm not common for New Zealand. We New Zealand doesn't learn languages in great numbers. No. Okay. Oh, no. You're a rarity, my friend. You're a treasure, a national treasure. All right then. Uh, why not which nation <laughs> yeah right which one? take your pick um, well you can speak four languages so I'll take one um, alright this is the last one I love this one this. the reason why I like this one this lot is because I feel that with enough push this could be a thing I feel like this could be something in terms of mm-hmm. um, I could see people getting in groups so like putting the song on the bar without and like, a doubt and, and, and putting his arms uh, around okay. the shoulders. Yeah. I could yeah. the, the way it is yeah. and also now I'm preaching to the choir I mean it's a joke that we don't really have any like bar songs no. in, in in America we don't have that like the camaraderie like get together and yeah it's called chance. Bon Jovi yep. <laughs> oh yeah, <Just> yeah. <laughs> but, but when when you played this song for me on Saturday because we listened to a lot of your songs and when you play this one, I was like, you can literally sell the rights to this song. Like, it is fantastic. The lyrics, the catchiness, you can sell the rights to what you're talking about in this song and make some money off this. Yeah. I relocated I to, to course, Chicago so early January. This one a little bit. The weather right. was atrocious and yeah. the red line kind of scary. I found a place, I found some work and started getting checks. So next I turned to Tinder in the hope of getting sex. I chatted with a lovely lady by the name of Lauren. We met up in a north side bar, she liked that I was foreign. We got on well, some spark was there, she seemed like a good sort. It's at that point she asked me, Robbie, have you tried my lord? I lifted up the shot glass with anxiety and fear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then holy crap, my accent's weird. It sounds like I'm from here. I a shot of a lord, a shot of a lord will make you feel new. A shot of a lord, hey, put Chicago into you. With the bears and the bulls and the hawks <laughs> and I dirt the cubs for the socks. The CPL, the CPS, the CTA. A shot of a lord will make everything okay. Hey, hey. I, I that so that's su- like. It's, it's such the, a, it's the immigrant story. Yeah, yeah, it's a great camaraderie song. You could, I could see. Honestly, just people like let's order the shots, Malort, and then the bar has like a code. And anytime orders Malort, Malort, they put the hat, put, to put the in. song on. I could totally see like a theme or a catch with that. Yeah, um, no, it's totally the I immigrant story because what Malort is, it is what people who have lived in Chicago six months give to people who have lived in Chicago one month. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's good. A very good point. Never heard it like that. Yep. I heard that. It's, it's absolutely true. My first shot of Malort. I actually have some Malort. You want to do a shot of Malort? No, no thank you. <laughs> I do. It was a gift, and I think I had. No, I, I want to hear that, the Chicago accent out of him. I mean, yeah, I had that <laughs> bottle for like four or five years. The yeah. thing is like like a third gone. I think maybe <laughs> my oh. my first shot of a lot was at Emporium in Logan Square. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I love the Emporium. Good yeah, um, and it was on a Tinder date. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot remember the name of the girl. Um, her but name it rhymes was, with Lauren. Yeah, Lauren well, Ford. I did go on a Tinder date with a Lauren, but it wasn't Lauren. It was somebody else. Okay. Yeah, I, I cannot remember her name now, but she. 
It was like, have you heard of Malort? It's like, no. It's like, oh, we got to do Malort. I went to the bar and yeah. Anyway. Oh, it took the rest that, of that history. Was, oh like, my God, we got to do Malort. It's yeah. more like that. Like, okay. Something like right. that. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> well, I've, I've, I've had this idea since I, I live in the West Loop and an Emporium has just opened in the West Loop, very close to where I live. Um, I kind of going along with an audio recorder and making a series just bowling up to people because Emporium is such a first date first tinder date location right? oh sure i can yeah. totally see that because you know you get to do something together you get to like play cooperatively you get to play against each and other if you don't it's know an what activity you, if you don't know what your porium is for any it's, it's viewers an all arca- over it's an arcade bar yeah, yeah. you know enough, it's yeah. got like it's got pool and it's got air hockey and it's got shuffleboard and mm-hmm. you know, your porium i remember it was in, going back to back with headquarters because headquarters you didn't have to pay the program right. you did, but the thing, the quality of the games, I think, were better at exactly. Yeah. It's like, and I but think beer was better. Too. Beer's better too. Yeah. So it's like, what are you gonna? Do you want to pay for? Do you want free? Yeah, you yeah. want better games? Do what you that? pay for. Yeah. But anyway, it's a it's a great Tinder location because you get to do an activity and drink. Yeah. And, exactly it, right. and it's a public place. So I'm thinking of like going along with an audio recorder and a couple of mics and just bowling up to Love people it. and asking, <laughs> "Are you are you on a first Tinder date? Are you on this?" And just like chat, it's probably chat, all chat. over. <laughs> chat, chat, chat. Get them. Then get their contact details and follow up a week later. Just do some phone interviews with them. It's like and make it a song. <laughs> no, no, it's like just how how did it work out? How do did it work out? Statistics of it. Well, no, just get like, stories, you know. Oh, just, I was just and, like, and the best stories will come from the people who like never get to see the person again. Yeah. <laughs> Time out. That's what we'll do. If you really do this, yeah, and you have some list, we'll have you back on the show. Okay. And we'll list out. We'll we'll do a list and what just, this is what happened the first week on the first minute, yeah. and then after some time, that's we'll we'll, we'll do. I, sh- I shouldn't I shouldn't have said this on the episode because now somebody will take the idea. Yeah. But, nah, then we'll yeah. take it. No, nope, they can't. They won't betray about Robbie. Yeah. Robbie, I don't want to trade anymore. It. But all right. Um, Awesome. You have a like I just said from what I played. It's an extremely wide range of songs. Um, I liked um, also too. Uh, I know because I went to your, the the debut show. But uh, why is it called Pumpkins? Uh, it is track eleven on the album. It is called Pumpkins because Sam Kane, who is a beloved stage manager in the Chicago improv scene, he is the stage manager for Riff, which is probably the most technically complex improv show in the city. He's dealing with lights and uh, wireless um, hit body mics and a band uh, doing music improv. Um, you know, he, he was out and that's his favorite song on the album because mm. he listened to it. He's, he heard he was it. the one who sang it. At the he was the one who sang it. That, that cracked me up when he... Yeah. When it, you, you have to hear Pumpkins and the, the actual song, but when he, did, he, when he did it, he just like... Oh, just, just play, play, a, tiny, just play, play a tiny bit of it. Um, yeah, so it... We were, we were talking and it's it's a very simple title and it's a very catchy song and it, out of the songs that were produced, I think it's one of the ones that ha- like ended up with the best production and just sounded the best. Yeah, we might as well end yeah. it on and this little sample yeah. then on the, yeah. the, the, the cool. title of the song. So. One, two, one, two, three. Pumpkins, 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 pumpkins everywhere. Pumpkins, 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 pumpkins,
You said Bach, and I'm like, well, that is actually my first question for <laughs> who would win in a fight. Oh. And now we can play a song. Um, you don't have your keyboard oh. thing. Um, well, oh, you um, grab it if you want. Yeah, it, it, it should, should be dried be out by now. now. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the game round, who would win in a fight, where we just each of us will pick a uh, two Thank person, you. place, or things match up against them, and we decide who would win in a fight between the two. So who would yeah. win in a fight, Robbie? Yeah. I, I, between. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, because you said Bach, that was actually the first thing. It was two composers. Was Bach, who is also considered one of the, the <laughs> and Mozart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to get this is what I did. We need this more often on the show. All right. <laughs> now the reason I said these two composers, mm -hmm. just FYI, Rob, you can say it as you want. My favorite composer is Tchaikovsky. Whatever. Oh yeah, but yeah. Him. Yeah, fair cool. Um, but I put these two because how, and this is my negligence of the, the musical world, but how it was explained to me was like, those two guys were kind of like some of the quote unquote early punk rockers of music like yeah. in terms of compo composition. And they, they kind of broke the rules in sure. terms of composing. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how I understood about those two. All right. That's fair. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Bach, Bach, was, Bach was very much a rebel, um, especially in his younger days. You know, he became, you know, grandfather conservative when he got older mm -hmm. um and he had a ton of kids remember he had oh. like didn't Bach, he have like th with like three different women too or three two like, different two different wives yeah. um one he was one a player one died <laughs> oh no, no he wasn't a player like we had a bunch of kids with one wife she died ah. and then she, he got another wife makes sense Anna yeah. magdalena who you know younger soprano and had more kids with her um Mozart, yeah, Mozart broke a bunch of rules and like bucked authority and said like "fuck you, Archbishop of Salzburg." I think right. like, and you, I heard like you're not the boss of me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm writing my songs to rebel against you. I, I feel that there's also things he did though that, well, like for example, oh, my terminology is <laughs> horrible here, but I heard that the classical com composition was very, you know. Straight. By the numbers, like four, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and he would like throw little like skips in there just to mess with the rhythm or something like that. Just Bach maybe or as a, a Mozart. Mozart. Did. Yeah, is yeah. that you hear what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Um. Well, he he mastered the the very, uh, the very simple, the very stripped back classical form. Because okay, so Bach Bach died in 1750, which is a nice round number. Yeah, and sim like it's a nice round number. So there's like marks the end of the Baroque period, and it's like we just decided <laughs> that that is the because it's a nice convenient year, and Bach died in it. Fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Um, so Baroque was very or ornate and had a lot of um, counterpoint, like uh, lots of different melody lines going against each other, mm -hmm. and there was a kind of reaction to that. And Bach's own sons were part of the reaction to that. You know, mm -hmm. he had. You know, at least three of his sons became well-known composers in their own right. Um, and they like stripped it back. It's like, let's have clean lines and clean melodies. And Mozart was born into that era. And so he started pushing things into, you know, greater complexity and greater emotional range. And then that leads into Beethoven, which, and, which you know, gets that. into really stormy mm -hmm. emotional range. Yeah. So who would win the a question? Who would win in a fight? Who would win in a fight? All right. I like um, the rebel side. <laughs> so which one's the rebel? Yeah, I mean, the, I would, I would say more Bach. You say I, more I'm Bach go, is the more rebel? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to go Bach. I'm going to go Bach, but Mozart as a wild card. So Bach, um, this is a story I mentioned <laughs> in my song, Don't Fuck With JSB. Um, he, he would like call out um, and smack up people he disagreed with. Oh, Bach yeah? Did? Yeah. Like there was a bassoon player who he called... Uh, a billy goat bassoonist or something See? which is like a real like <laughs> then he's gotta win a real fight. big insult well my, but my thing though it wouldn't be i mean you just look at pictures or portraits sure. of these two you look at them like well oh, i think box Bo definitely was more heavier set yeah there's there's, more, there's more that robust there, there, that's he's got another the weight factor. that's another reason yeah bark bark was a bigger heavier set dude i think mm -hmm. he was more of a scrapper mozart was more of like the cheeky imp mm. who was going around <laughs> the place so I'd, I'd say like sneaky though. I think yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, is there I'd any say, weapons involved? Uh -huh. I'm, I'm getting to exactly that. I'm getting to exactly that. Bark would win 95 percent of the time. The other five percent of the time, Mozart 
would shit out a shit and throw it at Bach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's playing dirty. He's doing the monkey he's scene. Mozart was <laughs> Mozart was obsessed. Like he, you know, like Freud psychoanalysis. Mozart was stuck in the anal stage. Sure. His whole life. Oh, sure. Oh, shit. Wow. Oh, yeah. No, they, he wrote a motet called "Lick Me, Lick Me Him Ash, Lick My Asshole," <laughs> um, which is like all nicely chor- chorals. It was like "Lick Me Him is this real? Ash." Uh, yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Do you know I've this? never heard of that Oh, fuck. Part. Was it in, in St. Clown Posse or somebody oh, sampled ICP? it? There is a, there is a, I can't remember if it was ICP or not, um, but yes, it has been sampled in a rap Funny. track and they oh like, took us not like, scribe. Hey, and they're like, have you, heard, have you heard of this Mozart? Mo- this Mozart was a freak. He like, he wrote this song called Lick Me Ass. Is, what Done. does that mean? It's, it means lick my asshole. <laughs> I'm switching my answer now. I want that 5% winner. <laughs> I want oh, that man. underdog. Fighting dirty. Um, Fighting with shit. <laughs> gosh, I'm, now you just think of the music, though. What's the inspiration behind the man? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that Bach, though, I think it's misleading with the... That's like... I feel it's not really the theme of Bach, though. I think a lot of his other songs are more... More dance, I feel. Like oh this, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not. I don't think it's like that stereotypical, like the Phantom of the Opera, dark tone. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's an overall theme of Bach at all. Well, ba- Bach was an organist, absolutely, right. and he, you know, he worked at the St. Thomas Church in Leipzig for the last twenty-five years of his life, and yeah. he he was a fierce organ improvise organ improviser. Mozart didn't really play organs so much. Like he was a fierce, like pianist and violinist. And it's true that he started at like age three, right? Oh, he yeah. Was young. He yeah, was like totally. super young. Oh, no. So he, like, he was like his dad full on Jackson 5'd him. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, fuck oh, yeah. no. That's so he's turn, crazy. Then. That's yeah. why he explains the yeah, yeah. No, totally. Exactly. That's totally. Like Mozart now. Yeah, you gotta no, go Mozart. You gotta go with um, it. I, so that's, I don't know. Based he went off those facts, I think that, you know, Bach may be a little out of shape, even though he's in the higher weight class. I mm-hmm. think that Bach uh, is misleading, <laughs> too. Even Jackson 5'd and he liked to throw poop. Yeah, but I think that was, I think the Bach. Might have an answer because it's misleading in terms of like we know him primarily from some of those songs, but he has this whole other range mm-hmm. too. So he might be having some aces up his sleeves. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I like it. I'm, I just think that Mozart is the younger, wittier, more uh, I'll do anything to win. Yeah. Scrappier. Like Mozart would win in a rap battle for sure. Yeah. But I don't know that he'd win in a fight. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, which hmm. pick though? We have to pick one. I'm going Mozart now. I'm going two Mozarts. Here. I'm going Bach. Bach. I yeah, love, it. love it. We got a split decision. Yeah. I love it. Very good. Jeff, you got a who would win the fight? How about we do the All Blacks? Okay. Oh! Yeah. Versus the Chicago Bears. Oh. <laughs> All right. Turn, turn, turn out. This is part of my negligence of rugby. How many uh, men on the field for one team for rugby? At one time, 15. Okay, we got Ooh. 11 versus 15. 11 15. So, but one's got pads. <laughs> one's got pads? Yeah. Yeah, but th- do they need pads, though? <laughs> Probably though? not. I mean, like, well, okay. Who, they who, got the haka, so it's yeah. called the haka, right? Yeah, it's yeah. called the haka. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they have that. Who would win in a fight? I mean, do we get to even out the numbers of participants? Mm. Because rugby, you have 15 on the field and you have seven on the bench mm-hmm. who can substitute in. And American football, you have like bench. 11 on the field and everybody's fucking cousin and brother <laughs> yeah. and uncle and great grandson like, and just like physiotherapists and yeah. all this other shit on the sidelines of the field. It's like, is there any room for grass? I, I, and I, 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 that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a 50 something roster. It's 52, football. I it's think. Crazy. It's, yeah. it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's, the injuries in football are just ridiculous. Here's the thing, though 15 players in rugby, yeah. seven on the bench. That makes 22, right? Correct. Offense and defense combined. Is twenty two. Oh, yeah. Think oh. about it. There you okay, go. that's so you got there. We go. All the, like all the quote unquote players that actually play in the game. Sure. Seven, like I don't, I'm sure in rugby they 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 sub them in too. So yeah, yeah. I say so. We still haven't even over twenty two okay. versus twenty two. I like that. That's okay. Yeah. One of the the substitutions will come in generally at some point, like either for injury. Mm-hmm. So an injured player will go off and will be replaced by somebody else for the remainder of the game. We have to fight in South Africa because it's a <laughs> neutral it's territory. It's, ground. it's neutral ground. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of central. I mean, sure. it, for the most part, central-ish. Cent- South Depending Africa. which way you're going on the map. <laughs> yeah, but I mean... Yeah. So we have Hawaii to find could be more central, but also South Africa is pretty big in South yeah. for rugby as well. And um, okay, so I think is that's there a guy here. on All Blacks that's like the baddest, biggest like fighter on the team? Oh God, okay, I'm not. 
I'm not super current with like I'm not super current <laughs> with the All Blacks. I I can talk all day about like '90s All Blacks, okay. ah. right? Because that that's when I was that's when I grew up with it. That's when sure. I watched it on TV. And, and as soon as you come to America, everyone's yeah, like, I mean, I, sports. I, I do then... I do kind of lose lose touch with it. Sure. Um, I suppose like the biggest the biggest most fearsome opponent would be Richie McCaw. Okay, he just sounds badass. Yeah, that's Ri- a good, that's name. A good name. Ri- Ri- Richie McCaw was captain of the All Blacks. Yeah. Um, he he also holds the he holds the record for the most test matches played for the All Blacks. Full stop. Like a hundred and forty or something. <laughs> oh it, he had that's a, a lot of he losing a, teeth. He had a long career. Um, most as captain, he was captain for a solid ten years. Damn. Won those two World Cups in 2011, 2015. Um, oh, so maybe it's like, like he's a, I know exactly who you're talking about. He's a, he's a he's big, a really good looking guy yeah. too, isn't he? Like he's a really good. He's like he's uh, a handsome no, fellow. You, you're, there are a couple of fellas more handsome than him on the team. Hmm. Yeah, um, so I want to look this guy up because I'm thinking it's Rich, Richie McCaw, right? Richie uh, McCaw. It's the guy with the tattoo. Yeah, Rich. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think I don't think it's him. Richie McCaw, right there. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, R- Richie McCaw. Let me see. He's he's not. No, you're right. I was yeah, thinking he's of not the else. arch handsome guy. You're either no. thinking of Daniel Dan Carter or Sonny Bill Williams. Sonny Bill Williams is the one with the tattoo. Sonny's he's currently this on guy's the team, right? Neck is the size of my leg. Oh yeah. Oh Jesus. yeah. Yeah. He's he's an he's an absolute man mountain. Not so, only that, he is stud a stud horse. Not only that, he is a really really smart motherfucker. Oh God, he's like, the best of both worlds. Like he was. That just su- kills the bears right yeah, there. Hurts the bears. <laughs> yeah, he was going to take out three of them at least. <laughs> he was a super academic high achiever in high school. Ah, geez, like not we definitely don't have not only. We, we, so none you, of you know went was, to college. You know, I was talking about like um state or boys school. So he went to one of them. He went to Otago Boys High mm. in Dunedin, and you know he was captain of the rugby team, captain of the first fifteen. Um, it was, I'm sure he was head boy as well, but he was also like the second highest academic guy in his year. <laughs> oh, what a jerk. Yeah. He's, he's a decent, like, he's a, a good looking guy. In a serious, like a serious high school. <sighs> yeah. Um, is so he he's currently on the smart. team or is he the 90s? No, he, he's retired. Okay. So like 15 was his last year. Wasn't so it? yeah, yeah. Oh, um, so, so, and he, I think what he does now is he really enjoys um, glider planes. Oh, come wow. on! What the fuck? He's like, and I think he's got his helicopter license as well. Yeah, he's just like, okay, I'm done. I can't do rugby anymore. Except I was now gonna go fly things. I was gonna say maybe he's our Brian Urlacher, but you know, maybe not. Urlacher <laughs> is dumb. I was thinking more size wise. Hey, look, this, well, look, <laughs> R- Richie, 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 Ma- Richie McCaw intelligence wise is not emblematic of the entire All Blacks team because you know it's all like. Right, really? uh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they are sport. Like, you know, that's, you know, let's yeah. level the playing field a little bit. We are talking about athletes yeah, here. They We're don't not wear talking helmets. about Robbie Ellis's four language speaking came out with the debut album kind of players here. Okay, right. We're talking about I eat grass and, and fart Mozart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, oh, how can you not go for know, all blacks? I, know. I mean, like, like, they're not wearing pads they they take more punishment to the body and then they're i feel like overall they're just faster you got like Probably. a bunch of 300 pound men on the bears but they can't run yeah well Fo- but you can't Fo- tackle them then so if these football, guys hit a full football speed is just more explosive i mean you you just run it run at each other at speed yeah and play lasts for 10 seconds and then a whistle goes yeah right yep. rugby play can continue for sometimes four or five minutes several minutes at a time um just continuous phases you know the it gets passed out wide, tackle, goes to the breakdown, the ball gets fed out, right. tries to pass out wide, tackle, gets fed out. And it can go for 20-something phases like that. And then the ball might get turned over. Sure. Mm-hmm. And the, the turnover just happens in the course of play. It goes back, I mean, like in, so the, the so whistle... They get, they whistle get better cardio. <laughs> so the whistle doesn't get called unless it goes out of bounds right. or uh, there's a penalty infringement or... They score. Or they score yeah. or uh, the ball get or there's a knock on which means basically you drop the ball in front of you. Right. So if you drop if you drop uh, the ball can hit the ground, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, cuz that's usually they run they drop it and then they can like kick it or something like you, that. Yeah, so, or, yeah, a drop kick is not a knock on, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um yeah, but you have you have to pass backwards. Yep. Right. So Always if the happens. ball if the ball hits the ground in the course of a backwards pass, that's okay. It means it's not a very good pass. So that's what I'm but thinking a, right now. See, yeah. the Bears are trying to throw some punches, but see, the All Blacks are used to going lateral anyway. So it's just like the punch comes, they're used to going back. They're just oh. they're swinging and missing. They're swinging and they're, missing. They're more agile. Saying? Yeah. And then, but I feel that they don't got the Mr. they don't got Mr. Biscuit. Get that low. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> quick feet. Quick feet. Quick feet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
I, um, the haka though, man. What do Bears do before the game? They just they're, they're putting on their their headphones. Super Bowl subscribe. shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Super Bowl. Sh- yeah, yeah, the Super Bowl shuffle. Not many, haka. if any. I don't know anybody. <laughs> North Canterbury, it's all good. Kiwis it's up all in here. You come down to my hood. We come to South Canterbury. It's all good. It's. <laughs> I'm gonna listen to Scribe. Yeah, now. listen, listen to the Scribe. We're plugging two albums now. Yeah, um, listen to the song "Not Many" by Scribe. You gotta go all blacks. I'm thinking about the padding though. They get to reduce the the pitch. So mm. <laughs> no, with the padding though, they can reduce the, the 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 injury. But, uh... Yeah, but their necks can probably take out half our team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that. I think I'm gonna go. With the, the, the deciding factor is the haka, where the yeah. Bears are just gonna be like. Huh? This is stupid. Hey, let's go. What is this? So they get all tranquil with it and they just get knocked out. Yeah, there you go. Just a, it's like it's hypnotism, man. It's it's like watch. We go all blacks. He goes bears. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so wait, the fight stadium is placed in South Africa. You South said. Africa. I was right. gonna say based on the All Blacks record at Soldier Field, the Bears probably have a better winning record <laughs> at Soldier Field than the All Blacks do because the All Blacks are one win, one loss. Not recently because yeah, uh, the tr- Bears have been pretty bad for a while. Man. Even at, even at home, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, well, I mean, I have to say All Blacks, sure. don't I? I, yeah, I can't, I can't say, I can't not pick them in a fight. <laughs> I can respect a man who just hits another man as hard as he can without pads. Yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah for national affiliation only. Yeah. Yeah. I, I simply have to say All Blacks. Yeah. yeah, that was actually I have to find that picture from Halloween when I did that. They had like the yeah, black, I never I seen the, that I picture. Had the black polo on and. Uh, did you, whole socks did you put tattoos on it all? No, no tattoos. Uh, all the guys have tattoos. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Rich I, I feel like tattoos. a lot of them nowadays have like the the tattoos, but I think that's more now, not your '90s all blacks. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, it's time. Uh, first off, that was a great gate round of who would win a fight. We don't have time to play anymore, but that was good. It was good. To, like we really broke it down there too, and I wanted to. I'm glad we did the composer one too. It, was, uh, <laughs> it is now time though to rate the beer, Jeff. I brought the beer, so take it away. Rate in Jalapa. Halapa! Um, One Wells Halapa. I think it's... I have mixed emotions. So I, I really like the flavor of it. I like the jalapeno, the, the non-spice jalapeno kind of stuff. Yeah. But it kind of coats the mouth a little funny after a while, too. It's like got this lingering, like, syrupy taste in my mouth. Sure. Which is not very appealing. So I think it's a good balance overall beer, but it's just kind of not for me. In general, I'm giving it a 3.25. 3.25. It's, yeah. one, it's a, a 1 through 5 scale. 2.5 is like the most average beer you ever had. 5 is the best, 1 is the worst. All right. Um, well, first of all, I'm very impressed with how they managed to get jalapeno flavor without spice. And That's true. Um, props for that. That is that is an extra arbitrary number of points. Um, it This is too great a quantity in my opinion yeah, sure okay. to drink um i think that yeah it should be a stubby can worth um mm. not this much um stubby yeah. can i like that can, right? uh, yeah like a it. stubby it's like a regular 350 ounce. yeah 12 oh. ounce can yeah, yeah oh you're going you're going <laughs> milliliters going milliliter. well three 355 yeah um, i love it in in new zealand they're called stubbies uh, i love it we're gonna use that from we're now on stubbies it. yeah um, you also, I agree, though. You also have shorts with uh, stubbies. And I love that I went 12 ounce and you went milliliters. Just completely different yeah, metric well, yeah, system, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're also the... Uh, anyway, yeah, what, what, whatever, whatever. Um, it's it's interesting, but not in not in this quantity. And yeah, yeah it's a little bit like saliva mm-hmm. now. Uh, I'll, I'll go a three. Three. I'll go a three. Very good. Yeah. Right. I, really, I was really, interested. I really enjoyed this. Uh, I love I, I, something to do with peppers, whether it's jalapeno pepper, red pepper. Whatever, some, I think peppers and beer just make a great combo, and it's very, very rare. And um, I I really like this. That being said, based off, I don't have to re- be too redundant here, but I feel that the same thing, that crushability factor is something that we've been taught about how a lot of brewmasters want to make a crushable beer after you have one, you want to have another one. You want to, like, it, that's, it's, you're welcoming that flavor and welcoming that taste. Yeah, the crushability, I don't think it was extreme as mm-hmm. you guys were. It's not that great, but I could definitely go for more for this. I'm giving it a 3.75, actually, okay. because I really I really enjoy this flavor, and it's very unlike beer. But again, I was thinking about four, but again, crushability factor brings it down. Well, there's there. not a lot of beers out there like that, which no, is nice. It's different. Like so that. if you want something completely different, this is, this is the way to go. Very good. That's true. 
Excellent. That's good, a good score for a good beer. Thank you, Aaron, for bringing this. And yep. uh, thank also you. shaking it up and spraying it everywhere. Don't worry. I'm going to cut that part out because that was just a lot of... It's it, it was impressive that it was sitting there <laughs> undisturbed mm-hmm. for at least an hour. And I opened it and it still fizzed like yeah, a motherfucker. Like has a button or something. He's just like, <laughs> the whole time just probably, <laughs> probably does, actually. The jalapeno he's just a, exploded. He's just hijacked the audio. <laughs> he's like actually in like your downstairs yeah. laundry, like just like <laughs> tuning in with his like spy piece earphones. He's like... He put, he put a two weeks. Weeks jumping bean in there just yeah. so it's fizzing around. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, this has been episode 139 of A Brew With You. I'm one of your hosts, Big Deal Blake. You can find A Brew With You on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, but most importantly, patreon.com slash Big Deal Blake to just support the show and get your extra wars and perks. Jeff, where can the lovely people find you? Follow me personally on Instagram at Distinguished Life. Otherwise, just follow the show. Lot to plug right now, Robbie. Yeah, all right. Let's plug it all. Just just get it all out there. Let everyone pay attention to Robbie. So the day of this release of this podcast is June the 11th, the Monday. Tonight, Monday, June 11th, 2018, I am playing at Judy's Beat Lounge in the first show of my East Coast tour. That's at Second City. The show is 8.30 p.m. If you are in Philadelphia or New York City, come to my shows on Sunday the 17th and Monday the 18th of june details at robbie ellis.net follow me on facebook at robbie ellis musics and i'm on twitter and i never use it <laughs> <laughs> robbie ellis.net so the album is pumpkins we played some samples from you i hope you really enjoy it i i had a blast listening to it it's really fun it's very easy listening um Good time music. Good. I think you know. I actually, I think it's good for us. A good party music. A house, a house party, and have yeah. some play in the background. Yeah, that's really, a good point. It's, it's a, a very good uh, background like party that. music too. Um, yeah. Robbie, it has been um, an absolute pleasure. Thank you for very having nice me on. You. Congratulations. So, yes. so glad to be on. Get me those list of stings. I will make you some stings. Uh, yeah, I yeah. really appreciate that. Well, yeah. I throw those stings in there, and uh, we have to work that in. But uh, it's you're on here. There's no excuse now. <laughs> um, honestly, congratulations on the album. Good luck on the tour. And I really hope to have you back here too. Like just to talk more about back, New yeah. Zealand, just talk about more about music. Um, just shoot you're a very, very well-educated man too. And I feel like we just, I'm talking about super scratch the service to Robbie Ellis. So I think yeah. we can dive deeper in further episodes. I'd love to talk about more. Yeah, I love it. Come back. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, and telling a friend. And remember, what's it rhymes with Kiwi, Jeff? Lee wee wee wee. I do rhyme the word kiwi on the album. Do you? With, with what? Uh, with agree we. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They were liking, sharing, subscribing, and telling a friend. And remember, you can agree we with the kiwi himself, Robbie Ellis. Bye.